All right, let's call the meeting to order. And if you could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, are we good, Michael? This meeting is being recorded by the Town of North Reading via Zoom and by Norcam, and it may be being recorded by other local sources. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you don't mind remain, if we could just do a, a moment of silence, if we could remain standing for that. Um, just to, to remember the victims of Uvalde, Texas, as well as um, Mr. Studo met, mentioned there, there was another shooting this evening in a Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma hospital. Um, we just want to be in solidarity with those individuals and the, and the people that are dealing with those tra tragedies. Thank you. I don't know if my colleagues have any comment about that. In these times, we do typically take a moment to, to, to discuss these things, or at least state our piece about, about um, you know, these types of things. So if there's anyone that wants to comment, I'd invite you to do so now. Or wait till the end if you, if you prefer. I, I'd just like to comment, Madam Chair, that Again, we, we all sound like a broken record here, but you know, it, it's time for Congress to act. You know, there is more that we agree on when it comes to gun control, common sense gun control, than what we disagree on. And there's no reason, no excuse um, for Congress not to take some positive action in this direction. And it should be bipartisan. It, it's not, it's not a, a partisan issue. And it's, uh, it's well past the time to take appropriate action and do something, you know, and it can, you can blame mental illness, but, you know, th there's no good reason for an 18-year-old to have a, was it an AK-15 or 45, whatever the hell it was, you know, a military, military grade weapon, military, military grade weapon with uh, massive magazines, you know, that's not sports, you know, that's not, that's, that, that's not appropriate, but anyway. There, sh there should be a lot of common ground here where they can make some headway in this issue. And uh, it, it should be able to assist in averting these tragedies. Again, you're not going to prevent people, uh, mentally ill people, from doing such things. But it certainly could curb uh, the ability of some of these people to get these weapons in their hands. And uh, it, it's long past due. Can um, you know, I do think that Congress needs to re-examine gun control. But I also think that that's not the only answer. That there are too many kids that slip through the cracks, that too many uh, people that need um, psychotherapy or whatever, and we're not meeting those needs. Okay. And, you know, you can, you can make it hard to get a gun, but eventually somebody will probably get one. And time, I think we need to look more closely. And I think my friend does a pretty good job and is very cognizant of the issues that kids have. But so many communities don't uh, pay attention to it nor have the resources. And I think those issues and uh, mental health are, are almost as important as uh, uh, gun rules and regulations. My personal feeling is you shouldn't have to kill an animal or a person and you shouldn't have to have a gun, but that's just me. Okay. But I don't think it's this simple. I don't know if anyone else has any. No, I think. You, you don't have. I mean, I would just want to give the opportunity. Yeah. We are joined by many people, so. Mrs. Gonzalez. I, um, I can't agree more with Mrs. Hill, but, um Chicago has some, I'm not going to make this a debate, but Chicago has some of the strongest gun control and the highest rate of gun violence. So mental illness is something that really needs to be looked at in this country um, and dealt with better. It's, it's not dealt with properly. Um, so that's what I would like to see. 
Um, I'm going to toot my country of birth horn. In Italy, per, per, uh, per capita, there's just as many guns in the U.S. However, only one mass shooting in the last 30 years, and it's because of a lot of the, actually, everything that both Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Robert said. A combination of that is used. But, again, that's why I say that because the gun ownership, and you can, if you Google Italy gun ownership, there was an article on it today. Because of that, though, I feel that you can still, it's ironic, right? You can still have law-abiding citizens have the same number of guns, but if it's done in a certain way, you can avoid a lot of the tragedy. So I just wanted to, it was just interesting. I think, I think the piece of it is that Europe does not have as many incidents such as we have by a wide margin. But we also never had a war fought on our land. And I think that memories of World War I and World War II and guns and fighting and killing um, are far more ingrained in the spirit in Europe. And that that may also prevent some of this gun violence. Just a thought. And I'll just round, it, round off the discussion just by saying that we you know, and I think I can speak for my colleagues that we are in solidarity with the families of the victims here and that we do, you know, wish them peace, pray for peace, you know, pray for um, their, them to get through what they're dealing with. And, you know, we can all throw up some answers, throw out some answers here. We all seem to have a lot of answers to the, to the problem, but there are just evil people that do evil things and whatever restrictions, measures, or things that can be done to prevent them. I, I don't understand why, and I agree with Mr. O'Leary, common sense should be put them into place. What, what are we doing here? We, we should be enlightened in 2022. And we know what those measures are, so we can't, you know, can't, can't pretend. It's not gonna prevent everything. It's not gonna prevent an evil person from doing evil acts and causing trauma, but there's certain things that we should be able to do that will help prevent that. I hope that people do, you know, calmly, coolly, collectively get some of these answers in place and make some, take some, take some proactive action on it. And I also would like to shift to something not as, you know, much, uh, another more positive thing, and I'm taking it out of order, but if you'll indulge me, I do want to remind our um, anyone that's attending and our members that it's it is um, LGBTQ Pride Month, and it's not on the agenda. But I'd like to read the proclamation from the board in recognition of what we have done and instituted in place as a board. And so, um, thank you for uh, getting this ready, Mrs. McNeil, for us to. to to uh, remember that this as well. Uh, whereas we recognize June as Pride Month throughout the United States and the world, we are reminded of what makes our community great, our remarkable capacity to accept and embrace the lives of others regardless of our differences. In this regard, we stand together with the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community as they declare their pride in who they are and whom they love. The LGBTQ community has worked tirelessly for respect, equality, and their very right to exist. While there has been remarkable progress towards acceptance and equality in recent years, members of the LGBTQ community still face an unacceptable level of discrimination. We must push back against those who threaten LGBTQ people, and we must continue to make the case that all human beings share something fundamental in common. All of us want to love and be loved. Therefore, be it resolved, we are proud to support our LGBTQ community's right to live their lives out loud. As we celebrate pride, we must continue to demand equal rights for all. Therefore, be it further resolved, the select board members do hereby proclaim June to be the Pride Month for the LGBTQ community in North Reading, and therefore be it further resolved, we encourage all residents to celebrate our proud and diverse LGBTQ community through a parade, decorations, and moral support 
that reflects well on our town in support of our LGBTQ neighbors, and we recognize LGBTQ residents whose influential and lasting contributions to our neighborhoods have made North Reading a vibrant community in which to live, work, and play, and by the select board proclaimed this first day of June 2022. It's kind of a nice way to round off the message of the devastation and that we, sh we can you know, support one another and especially support our LGBTQ residents and neighbors in this community. I don't know if anyone wants to add to that, but I appreciate your letting me you're letting me address that too this evening. Mr. Walner. So there is a, I was going to mention it during our, our oh, yes. at the end of the meeting, but there is a pride ride on Sunday, June 12th, just like last year, it was the first one. Um, it, it's going to gather at Ipswich River Park. That's a Sunday. And so if you want to participate, and it was a good time last, we had a class doing it last year. So I encourage you to join in again. There's the North Reading Pride Committee, and they just need to know by the, uh, by the 5th, if you're interested in being in the parade, you can decorate your car, do whatever you want with it, make it nice. And I heard there might be a party afterwards at the gazebo, but I don't know if that's true. So uh, come out for Pride Ride and, you know, live up to the words we just talked. So yes. thanks for saying those. That's great. Pride Ride, you can you can join, decorate decorate up your car. Yep. Or also come out on the on the street and just cheer, all, cheer along the participants in the parade and just show your support for our LGBTQ community. And it was very positive last year. Yeah. yeah, it was great. What was the time, Rich? Uh, it's the, the parade starts at 12. Um, yeah, and the cars line up at 11.15, right at the uh, right. River Park. So thank you, Mr. Wallen, for mentioning that. All right, and our next order of business is going to be the, the 745 warrant article, <laughs> informational here. Let me just read this um, this uh, notice of informational hearing. The North Reading Select Board does hereby notify the residents of the town of North Reading that an in-person and virtual informational hearing on the following articles contained in the June 6, 2022 town meeting warrant article will be held Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, 7.45 p.m. town hall room 14. The hearing information for access via phone, dial by telephone, meeting ID via the internet on Zoom. Uh, the meeting ID information is in the informational notice that was published. The hearing will represent an opportunity for residents to learn more about the articles on the town meeting warrant, to ask questions and to engage in discussion in advance of the spring annual town meeting. And the listing of town articles one through 27 follow. And this hearing is held pursuant to section sections 18 through 25 of chapter 30A of the Massachusetts General Laws, the open meeting law, any interested citizen is welcome to virtually attend and participate in this hearing. This is a notice of explanation. It is the unanimous desire of the North Reading Select Board to encourage and allow the highest level of public participation in making decisions that affect North Reading. This warrant article hearing is intended to represent an opportunity for extended discussion in advance of town meeting. We sincerely hope that you will join us for this hearing on June 1st at 7.45 p.m. signed by the select board. And we are watching for those attending online. We are going to be watching if you have any questions as we move along the warrant articles. The town administrator is watching if you can either raise your hand or make a chat, go into the chat room, and if um, you have any questions or you have any comment to participate, we've just opened the public hearing, informational hearing, so please feel free to raise your hand or chat or alert us in another way, wave your hand or alert us in another way if you'd want to ask a question on any of these articles. Just giving Mr. Gilberto a second to get everything set up. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. All right. So, 
we also may be if uh, we may be voting on some of these this evening to my colleagues if they're if we haven't already voted on these there may be some that are uh, that we're going to be taking a vote Mr. Gilberto, you have a presentation, I think, right? Did you want me to begin, or do you just want to take it away? And I can go through article by article. Why, why don't we do that? I know that a lot of these are routine, but just in case people have a question on them, um, sure. we want to make sure we go through them again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This first slide shows you the available funding sources for the upcoming town meeting. Um, some of which will be used to fund the various articles. Um, however, the primary funding source will be the town's raise and appropriate sources. I think you're going to need to talk more directly into um, that. We can hear you, but I don't know. OK. Is this better? Phil says yes. Phil says yeah. yes, OK. So I, I think this mic was long. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. The slide up here shows you the available funding sources for uh, many of the articles to be taken up at the town meeting. It does not list the largest funding source, which is the town's raise and appropriate budget, which is uh, funding uh, utilizing state aid and local receipts, as well as uh, property tax revenues. Well, that's identified in the budget article. So going right through, article one is a budget amendment for fiscal year 2022. We, at this point, uh, have only aware of one transfer that will be proposed, which is a transfer of $50,000 from the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund to Line 35, Solid Waste Management Expenses of the FY22 budget for the purchase of the pay-as-you-throw trash bags required for the pay-as-you-throw program slated to begin later in the calendar year. That's a $50,000 transfer from the Stabilization Fund to the budget. Both the Finance Committee and Select Board have recommended the article. As you saw in the prior slide, the uh, balance is $165,000. There's no questions on I don't that. see any. Any other, any other comment or question from anyone that's here? All set? Okay. Madam Chair, Article 2, funding the fiscal year 2022 snow and ice deficit. This appropriation pays expenses that exceed the amount budget in the fiscal year 2022 um, budget. Uh, we are anticipating funding $480,000 with free cash to reflect the overage um, associated with uh, multiple snow uh, and multiple ice events over the course of the winter. Again, the funding source being free cash. Select board and finance committee have both recommended the article. Madam Chair, I will just note that state law does allow us to carry this deficit into the next fiscal year. Um, however, we are choosing instead to fund it using free cash uh, rather than doing so. Okay. Any questions? All right, moving right along. Oh, hold on one second. I see a chat raised there. Having a hard time understanding. Having a hard time understanding. It's probably, you probably need to pull that mic closer to you. Understanding or hearing? There is a difference. <laughs> hearing. Yes, okay. Okay, hopefully this is better. Sir, is the sound better? Yes. Thank you. You had some, Mrs. Deshara wanted to join too. Yep, I just admitted. She also in there. Okay. All right, we're moving on to Article 3. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is the transfer of funds to the Capital Improvement <laughs> Stabilization Fund to be used for capital purchases and debt service. Current balance $958,995. This article proposes to add $1,950,000 from free cash to the fund. As you know, our financing plan for the fiscal year 23 budget called for a transfer of $1,450,000 into the fund. We are recommending that the balance of unexpended free cash after we go through these articles also be added to this fund for potential use for either debt service or capital needs uh, in the coming months and years as we go through our capital plan. Okay, you have five 
uh, it looks like five chats, some of which may be resolved, but can we just make sure that we don't have any questions on this one? We're all set. Okay, good. Does anyone have any questions? All right, we are all set moving, moving along. Article four, transferring funds to the water stabilization fund. This is a transfer of water enterprise retained earnings to be transferred into the stabilization fund in the amount of $287,325, which represents the balance certified by the Department of Revenue as of June or July 1st, 2021. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions? We're all set. Madam Chair, Article 5, transferring funds to the stabilization fund. Current balance is $3,784,025 with a recommendation of transferring $250,000 in free cash to the stabilization fund. Again, this is a general stabilization fund continuing to put funds aside as they are available. Mr. Um, Gilberto, you may have to talk a little bit louder. Okay. And does anybody have any questions? Mr. O'Leary, can you present Articles 1 through 5 at the town meeting? I believe I'm capable. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Do you have a question, Mr. Studo? <clears throat> it might be one at the end that I may volunteer Mr. O'Leary as well. Yeah, I'm just going to say that might be one we want him on. That's all right. Okay. I, just, I, I was just going to go in order. That's but fine. If you want to take some at the end, that's that's all right. We'll get we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yep. All right. Article, <laughs> Article six moving along. Article six transferring funds to the other post employment benefits liability trust fund. That balance is two million eight hundred ninety seven thousand two hundred thirteen dollars. Um, we are represent recommending funding that in a later article as part of the FY twenty three funding plan, and therefore are recommending that the board actually vote now to recommend passing over that article. That is one of the few that for which a recommendation had not been offered. So do, do we motion. have any questions? Do we have a motion? We do. Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article 6, fiscal year 2022 transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. It's unanimous it will be passed over. <coughs> we'll recommend pass over by the select board. Okay. Madam Chair, through you, transferring funds to the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund, Article 7, the current balance is $165,970. We are recommending transferring $30,000 from free cash. This is a transfer that we did not do during the course of fiscal year 2021, as we normally would do. We've waited for free cash to be certified, which has occurred, as you know, and we are recommending a transfer of $30,000 uh, from free cash into that fund. And both the Select Board and Finance Committee have previously recommended. Any questions? Any comment? None, so we can move on. Madam Chair, through you, Article 8, appropriating funds to the Participating Funding Arrangement Fund. Very similar situation to the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. We did not make this transfer after the closeout of fiscal year 2021. The funds closed to free cash, and we are recommending transferring them from free cash to the Participating Funding Arrangement Fund. And again, this amount reflects a surplus generated from active employee health insurance in fiscal year 2021. It's the town share. There is a separate share uh, in the payroll deduction accounts uh, that represents the employee share. And both the Select Board and Finance Committee have previously recommended. Okay, any questions? <coughs> Seeing none. Hearing none. Can move on? Madam Chair, through you, Article 9, a routine article that authorizes the Select Board to choose officers for which a no other selection process is provided. And the Select Board has recommended the Finance Committee has determined that no action is required. Okay. Any questions? All set. Article 10, to hear and act on reports of town officers and committees. This is to, <coughs> excuse me, allow for reports of town officers and committees 
as well as to accept the annual report uh, in written form. Both the select board, uh, the select board has recommended, the finance committee has determined that no action is required. And I am aware of at least one or two reports to be offered, one of which will be from the facilities master plan, and I believe there may be a report from the economic development committee as well, um, so that that's to be determined. All right, any questions? All right, so I don't see any, I don't see any in the chat. Mr. Walner, can you handle articles six through 10, please? Sure. Madam Chair, through you, Article 11, prior year bills. We had thought that there was a Conservation Commission bill that needed to be paid. We later identified that it was the responsibility of uh, an applicant, um, and so that will be handled uh, by the applicant as is required through their process. However, there were some bills that were identified between now, uh, between the last meeting on May 9th and now. These are injured on duty claim deductibles that were not previously invoiced by our insurance carrier in the amount of $2,314.47. Um, these require a four-fifths vote at town meeting, and we are recommending a funding source be pensions and benefits line 33 of the current year, fiscal year 2022 budget. The board had not offered a recommendation um, yet with regard to this article, uh, and it is the finance director and I's recommendation that the board vote to recommend, and I believe the motion is for that. All right, any questions? Any, any questions of our attendees? Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 11, prior year bills. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Select Board recommends. Madam Chair, through you, Article 12, the fiscal year 2023 operating budget. It is voted as two motions, one from available funds, mainly raise and appropriate, as well as uh, <coughs> debt service allocation. <coughs> Excuse me. The grand total is eighty-four million two hundred fourteen thousand two hundred fifty-five dollars. I've provided uh, slide, the finance director has provided a breakdown here showing the four major categories of appropriation. Um, for those who have been following along, we did have a pretty detailed hearing on May 9th on the budget itself, so you are seeing a summary. Uh, in the event a further review is required at town meeting, we will have the capability to um, go through some more detail on the budget. But to summarize, general government, which includes employee benefits, $32,991,480. Education, which includes not only North Reading Public Schools, but our assessments to the vocational and technical schools, $36,481,700. Our enterprises, of which there are three, Parks and Recreation, Hillview and Water, total $7,021,247. And our debt service payments, which total $7,719,826. The select board has voted to previously <coughs> recommend, as has the finance committee. Okay, any questions on the budget? Pretty well detailed in the warrant with those pages and pages. Does anyone have any comments? I see none. I don't see any. Okay. This is just a pie chart. The part pie chart showing the breakdown um, between schools and municipal government operations, which is 66.89% uh, compared to 33.11%. Uh, additional allies. Breakdown showing fixed costs of schools and municipal government operations. <coughs> Excuse me. Article 13, funding retirement obligations. Uh, we are recommending funding $160,000 from free cash, 75,000 of which would be for municipal retirement obligations, and 85,000 of which would be for public school retirement obligations. And both the select board and the finance committee have previously voted to recommend the articles. Any questions or comment? Seeing none, we can move on. Article 14, transferring funds to the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. As I mentioned earlier, this is an annual appropriation from raise and appropriate within our budget in the amount of $300,000 and it's being recommended in accordance with our annual financing plan. The select board and the finance committee have both previously voted to recommend. Any questions or comments? Seeing none. Article 15, authorizing the treasurer to enter into compensating balance agreements. 
This has become a routine article which allows the town treasurer to enter into agreements with banks to which a portion of the interest earnings of deposits are retained by the bank in exchange for their services rather than making a direct payment to the bank for its services. Both the select board and the finance committee have voted to previously recommend. Okay, any questions or comment or chat? All right, seeing none. Mrs. Gonzalez, will, will you take articles 11 through 15, please? <coughs> Okay. Article 16. Madam Chair, for you, Article 16 would be to rescind authorizations to borrow, previously, author previously authorized uh, borrowing. There are none anticipated at this time, um, and we had uh, indicated to the board and the finance committee that we would continue our review. <coughs> and based upon our overall plans for this town meeting, it is our recommendation that the board vote to recommend passing over this article. And we have prepared uh, an article, a uh, motion accordingly in the packet for this evening's meeting. Okay, any questions? Any comment? Seeing none, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article 16, rescind authorization to borrow. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It is recommend, select board recommends passing over. Article 17 is the annual capital budget presented by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee on May 9th and approved by the board at that time. Um, I will just briefly go through, <coughs> or present I should say, a detailed listing of the appropriations, um, both um, through um, funding to be authorized as free cash or authorization to borrow. Um, there are a couple of pages of them. I am not going to read through all of them, but they are printed in the warrant that was mailed to every resident's uh, home. Uh, arrived uh, a week or 10 days or so. The select board and the finance committee both have previously voted to recommend the article. Okay, any questions? Any comments? Seeing none, so that all set. <coughs> I'll note, Madam Chair, that the article does in include enterprise funded projects as well. Article 18. Funding town building repairs. The BW is looking to make uh, various miscellaneous repairs and improvements to municipal buildings for a total of $50,000. We're recommending it be funded from free cash. The select board and the finance committee have both previously voted to recommend. Any questions or comments? None. All right. Madam Chair, the new article 19 would authorize the expenditure of so called Chapter 90 state highway construction funding. We anticipate receiving $514,529 from the state, which is the town's share of $200 million being um, distributed by the state statewide in fiscal year 2023. Both the select board and the finance committee have previously voted to recommend. Questions? Comments? We're all set. Article 20, a routine article that authorized the director of public works to accept the easements for construction and maintenance of water mains, drainage, and other purposes, both the select board and finance committee have previously voted to recommend. Okay, do we have any questions or comments or chat? None. All right, Mr. Studo, can you present articles 16 through 20, please? I'd love to. All set. Article 21, appropriating funds for legal expenses re regarding the middle high school litigation. No appropriations anticipated to be requested at this time, um, and we uh, would recommend to the board uh, that it vote to recommend passing over the article, uh, and a motion has been prepared. Questions, comments? All right, seeing none, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article 21, appropriate funds, appropriate funds for legal expenses, middle high school litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, select board will pass over. Madam Chair, through you, Article 22. Appropriation for funds for the legal expenses associated with the 20 Elm Street litigation. 
we are recommending that the board recommend the town meeting pass over the article as uh, no further appropriation is required at this time. Okay, any questions or comments? <coughs> Seeing none, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, do you I will just know we have about $120,000 remaining in that appropriation. It's a substantial amount of money at this point in time, and there is a motion, yes. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to recommend <coughs> passing over Article 22, appropriate funds for legal expenses, 28 Elm Street litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, will select vote, will recommend passing over. M Mr. Gilberto, I, I'll, I was planning to do the next remaining ones unless I get told otherwise by my colleagues but I think it's important to at least give a, an update one two three lines about where these are at including what stage they're at to, to, to the to the town meeting I think where we know that there's a trial scheduled in August for the for the uh, middle and high school litigation a long awaited after COVID finally scheduled uh, trial so hopefully well we will see the light at the end of the tunnel on that one soon and then 20 Elm Street that has not had its um, adjudicatory hearing yet. Uh, it was a examination of witnesses that occurred however a decision not been issued at this point. Oh I see okay it did go through the adjudication but we're awaiting the decision. Correct. All right so I think it's important to at least give an update so that you know, these are our, these on here for a long time, a number of town meetings, so it would be nice to update people. We'll make those additions, thank you. Okay. All right, so Article 23. Article 23 would increase the amount for disabled veterans' property tax exemption. It's currently $400, and we are recommending, and the board has um, submitted to town meeting, that the amount be increased to $800. Both the select board and the finance committee have recommended this article. Okay, any questions, comments? Seeing none, good, we'll move on to the next one. Article 24, uh, increasing the income limit for senior property tax deferral. Um, I would note that there was a question relative to what the dollar amount will actually be. It is currently $20,000. This article would state that that $20,000 number would become $62,000 period. So we previously had gone through and showed different tiers. It's a flat number at $62,000 for um, for individuals who are claim making the claim. And I'm sure Mr. O'Leary should have probably told us this when we we're going through the conversation. Uh, the board has previously voted to recommend it as the Finance Committee. Uh, as you know, this was an attempt for us to try to offer property tax relief um, uh, in the form of deferral. So it does not forgive the taxes, they are due to the town uh, upon the sale of the property, but an individual who chooses to do so may now defer those taxes uh, to a later point in time and may do so with earnings of up to $62,000. And that number is indexed to the amount established by the Commissioner of Revenue at the state level annually. Again, for the current fiscal year, it's $62,000. And I think for the purpose of the presentation, if we did, we do, uh, if this does get approved at town meeting, it remains in effect and then it t ties to that I believe that it does, we yes. would learn, right so if it increases that amount would increase we don't have to revoke this that is our understanding from town council yes okay all right does anybody have any anyone else have any questions or comments or glad we're doing it yeah, yes <laughs> cool. yeah. it's a good thing these path these the other previous one too so any comment chat question from anyone in attendance we're all set and also we have our, our, we're joined by our assessor, so thank you for being here this evening too. All right, so we can move, move along to the next one. Article 25, uh, relative to the uh, alarm systems. Currently, the town's general bylaws require a $300 annual payment for uh, properties that tie into the municipal fire alarm system. This would move the, the authority to establish that fee from bylaw to the fire chief. And the reason is because the chief intends to make available a, a program where the fee is waived for uh, t a, an amount of time to determine to be at least three years. 
to encourage property owners to connect what is now a wireless system as a result of a capital investment that we've made over the past couple of years. Uh, he's not able to do so under the current bylaw, but that is the intention with regard to making this change. Both the Select Board and the Finance Committee have recommended um, we're trying to incentivize property owners for whom you know, this would be an expense if they are making a conversion um, uh, by offering them the ability to, to waive the fee for a couple of years. All right, any questions or comments? See none. I see none. And that's what we already voted to recommend. We did. It. Both, both the, the Select Board and the Finance Committee previously mm -hmm. voted to recommend. Are you taking those five, Kate? Is that, is that what you said? Yes. Oh. I was going to take the rest. I was taking the rest. Okay. But I, if, um, if, if it doesn't matter to me if you and Vincenzo want to do the. Um, I mean, even if you read it, we'll be up for an explanation if there's questions. Right. So Articles 26 and 27 is a. I was just going to take the, the remaining ones knowing you're. I know you're probably going to take leave, right, of the meeting to do a presentation on this one? No? Yeah. Or yes? Yes. Yes. Probably, but a short one. You know, okay. We'll, we'll sure. We get but five minutes. may not even need leave of the meeting. All right. Oops. Article 26 would amend the town over general bylaws <coughs> relative to assessments, specifically sewer betterments. And, um, this is a more extensive presentation, uh, three or four slides that we've developed compared to the last review that we did. We've also condensed a lot of the, the, the history and the background as well to really get to the salient points of what this proposal is. <coughs> and I think it's no secret, we've said this before, you know, the planning effort underway for a potential wastewater project to be, to be brought forward in the fall at a special town meeting has resulted in us identifying um, some some areas where we may wish to update the bylaw in advance of not only an upcoming project but any future sewer related project. Currently, to assess veterans for a sewer project, the town's bylaws require that the town provide, based on the availability of funds, 50% of the funds required. Um, a majority vote of abutting property owners based on estimated usage, so sewer flow, and that assessments to be better properties to better properties be the lower of estimates versus actual cost, which would place the burden of any shortfall directly on the town, specifically its taxpayers. The proposed bylaw developed by the, Department, the Director of Public Works, who is seated here to my left, working with town council, would make the following changes. Eliminate the requirement that 50% of the necessary funds be paid by the town, and replace it with language that grants town meeting the authority to determine a percentage or in the absence of such determination that the select board to determine a percentage to be borne by the town. It would eliminate the requirement that a majority of the abutting property owners vote in favor of a project which could prevent assessment of the cost of a sewer project upon the benefited landowners. It would allow the select board to separate costs to be immediately assessed to sewer abutting property owners as sewer betterment assessments from those costs which would be reserved for sewer privilege fee assessments to non-abutting properties that connect to the sewer line in the future. So people who are not the subject of an abet of, uh, in a, a betterment right now because they don't abut the line but seek to suck the, the, the tie-in in the future reserves that portion of fee to be assessed <coughs> to those properties at that time. The select board may also separate the cost of general benefit facilities such as pump stations, trunk and force mains, which we've talked a lot about, from that of a special benefit facility, such as a sewer main that goes right to an abutting property. Why make these changes? Removing the requirement of the approval of a majority of abutting property owners will allow the town, through its voters at town meeting, to make decisions regarding allocation of costs for construction of wastewater or sewer in North Reading. The town's currently required 50% share is ultimately the responsibility of the taxpayer and the appropriate share might vary depending on the nature of the sewer project. Removing this requirement will allow the town to determine through its town meeting or the select board the appropriate percentage to be borne by the taxpayer for the particular project. A very important note, and it's not something that we really brought to light, but I think needs, it cannot be understated. Town meeting approval of funding is required for any project to proceed. 
with or without betterments. So even if a project were articulated to be a 100% betterment project, the funding still needs to be authorized in town meeting. Separating out a portion of these costs for future connections outside the initial betterment area or for future development within the betterment area will ensure that there are no free rides in the form of properties that were not bettered or were developed after the betterment assessment is made and have accessing new or additional sewer, sewer capacity. So we tried to consolidate the presentation because I know there were some questions that came up um, and we took to heart what the concerns were here. But we are not recommending any changes to the bylaw as printed in the warrant and mailed to the residents at this point in time. I know, and I won't speak for the two board members who are involved, but both Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Sudo have been part of multiple conversations um, in regard to the feedback that we've heard. We <coughs> tried to take the appropriate steps to further outline what this bylaw would do. That was quite clear. You do have this, you are rec in this <coughs> one article, there is one change though that's in here that, that we're proposing for. There is modification here. There, there are multiple changes in the bylaw. Yes, I'm only yeah. saying that we're, we're not recommending changing that language that's in the Oh, line. I see, okay. Yeah. Any further than what's <coughs> correct. Yes, that's okay. Correct. There that are means, multiple changes. Okay, that's I see. Correct. All right, questions, comments, Mr. Studo. And what I'd like, to, I'll, I'll abridge it even more. Um, when I get asked how I'm describing it, very simply, maximum flexibility for the town. The town, and the town are the voters to, for each project, because this is not just for this sewer project, because we don't know where this is going. They could get shut down, but they could be a future wastewater project. It's to give the town a custom approach and appropriateness per project, not a one-size-fits-all, which what we have now. And one-size-fits-alls typically, I'm learning, do not work for any project of, from small to too large. So again, it's just for, to, in, in my opinion, update a very, I don't know, I mean, a, a, really a bylaw that I don't think is practical in today's you know, structure, and there's just so many moving parts that have such a rigid bylaw when it comes to certain things just didn't make sense. So again, it's just a vote for maximum flexibility, and then, I mean, this is kind of just something to have even for future projects, but again, I mean, the town authorizing itself <laughs> to then authorize something else in the form of who gets the betterment, that's, that's all it's really doing here. There's nothing more, it's not, you know, we, those discussions are going to come in other forums. When there's more information that's going to be readily available in the next coming weeks, then those discussions will come on the percentages and one way or the other. But that's not today. Today is just simply updating a bylaw that is antiquated and really doesn't allow us any flexibility in even future projects when it comes to wastewater pretty much anywhere in any form in North Reading, you know, it's kind of pretty rigid. So I just wanted to add that because I think that I've been asked as well, like, hey, Vincenzo, what, you know, what's going on? Does this mean that it's going to go 100% one way or the other? And it's like, no, actually, it doesn't mean any of that. It just means that the town is going to decide how it goes. So again, just to reiterate that, that line you put there that, you know, because I read some of the commentary as well in uh, various platforms that town meeting approval for the funds. That's like really important. So, because I think that, you know, there, there was some chatter that, you know, today or a town meeting on June 6th, a vote yes for this was that, thank you, thank you, everybody go home, we have the money, start building. And that wasn't the case. So I just wanted to make it clear. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Comments? Just one question. Mr. We, just, we don't have experience, obviously, with this. Is this language that we would see in other towns that other towns have done that have? Sewage is already in place. Would that be a fair? Would that be a fair statement? Madam Chair, through you, yes. Um, you know, some bylaws are older than others. Some are more detailed than others. They are. The authority is all rooted in state statute, um, and this bylaw was intended to um, provide clear, clear a, a line, a clear um, syncing with what state statute allows, and not burden the town for any decision that it wants to make with regard to wastewater in the future. I would put that in there to reassure people that we're not creating something brand new, that this is actually pretty standard for towns that have this potential. Yeah, I would I'll just put ask that in. 
DPW director. Best anything? practice, you know, best practice type. Anything thing. you want to add to that? Just that a lot of the language that's uh, in the, in the uh, bylaw is actually sort of quoted from Mass General Law as you read the general section. I would just add that in to reassure yeah. people that we're not making up something, you know, on our own, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mrs. Hurlbert. Um, yes, um, uh, Mr. Kelleher could not be here today because he's working on his tan. So, <laughs> you know, he always comes back from two weeks in a row looking wetter than he left. Anyways, he sent out an email um, a, a voicing a concern that uh, uh, trying to find the logic behind the 50% uh, town share for street sidewalks and storm drains and water supply while going up to, if not possible, 100% for the sewer benefits thing. I think his point, if I'm reading his uh, email correctly, is that he thinks that e equity would seem to dictate a uniform approach and that residents on unaccepted roads should not get a better deal than those having a sewer passing by their homes. Okay. So I, his question, I think his uh, question is, uh, why are we breaking out sewers for this? Why not all betterments? Madam Chair, through you. So we did, that was a question that we received from Mr. Keller uh, in a timely fashion. And um, I would say this, you know, one of the challenges that we, that, that I've identified with this bylaw going back eight years is I've not seen a single instance where we've been able to effectively implement it. Um, we've not gone to town meeting to seek the appropriation of funding. We're not issuing um, bills to um, the abutting property owners on private or public ways. Um, and the most recent example I can cite to folks on that is Swan Pond Road. We had quite a bit of conversation and it was you know, very clear in the conversation that it was not going to be a candidate for a betterment because we were not constructing it to become an accepted way. Um, so I, I think that the approach we wanted to take is there are, the sewer is a much more complicated and potentially impactful project for which there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Uh, and because of the unknown of what the development potential might be and the desire to make sure every property owner is paying their fair share, breaking this out separately made the most sense. Um, the other areas that are identified in the bylaw right now, including the unaccepted ways, are generally for drains, sidewalks, uh, which we don't do a ton of new construction of, uh, or um, paving uh, of, a, of, a, of a way as well. Well, there is an impact on the properties from an aesthetic standpoint and an access standpoint. It's not necessarily as significant as adding wastewater to a property. So I, so also, I, think that's what I, I would also add though too that we can't seek or use funding to, for the private ways like we might be able to put towards the public ways that this is you know, just taking the current sewer project. So it's not, I think it's saying that, that they're, they're getting an unfair deal as compared to people that might only have to pay 50%. They might only have to pay, you know, 80% of something that's largely funded by whatever, you know, whatever funds we can put towards this. I think Mr. Keller's point is not just unaccepted roads. Okay, that just happened to be an example that we set out. Perhaps it's not a good example. What do I know? I don't think it is because well, we, that's we can't yeah. use, we did learn with Swan Farm, we're not allowed to put any of those state right. funds towards that. Right. Okay, that would come directly out of the towns. But I believe that his you know. point is betterment's assessment covers a lot of things besides unaccepted roads and sewers. Um, as, as written here, and uh, the betterments is 50% or less for uh, everything but sewers, and up to 100 for sewers, and I think his sense is why not a little bit more equity. I, I don't shoot the messenger, but I know that this was something he was concerned about and that he wanted brought up tonight and he was unable to be here. Mm -hmm. Oh, is someone else? Question? Another question? Who are you? From Zoom. Oh, from Zoom. Okay. I can't Larry. read it. Larry. I believe it's Larry. Uh, oh, yeah. Can Larry. Can you hear me okay? Yes, welcome. <coughs> okay, 
Okay, I'd like to thank you for this presentation. Um, so I just want to, I have a few uh, questions and concerns. Um, so there was a procedure that was in place for paying for this when voters approved the fund for this phase of the project. Um, and, and that uh, plan was um, the current bylaw, which is required uh, down pay 50% of, of, the, um, of the burden. Uh, Larry, but, uh, do, Larry do you mean, Larry, do you mean for Swan Pond Road? No, I'm talking about the, um, the current project for the, the uh, sewer. sewer. Oh. Okay, so, so the current bylaw, um, you know, requires 50% of the, um, the, the, the betterment to be paid, as I understand it. So now, and the reason for doing that, the reason that that's in the bylaw now is because, you know, sewers will, will benefit It'll increase the tax base by, you know, um, you know, allows for businesses, and that benefits the whole town. But now, as I understand it, you know, you sort of like um, um, even the, the voters have approved this, this phase of the current study. But now you you're changing the rules in the, in the um, middle of the game. And so now, what you want to do is, is make it so that it's um, like a majority rule. Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll put it up to town meeting, so the rest of the town will probably say, we're going to pay 0%. Um, it, you, know, you want to make it so that it, 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 it sounds nice that you want to make it like a democracy, but sometimes it, that's not fair when the whole town is getting a benefit from this. But you're making it so that the other parts of the town have the say in, in how much they're going to pay. Um, so I'm just wondering if you would consider uh, taking this part of the bylaw out or, or putting some limit on it so that the town um, will, will pay some share that you're not going to you know, put it to a, to a majority rule vote because if you have just majority rule like that, um, you know, bad things can happen. I think we all know that. Um, so that's why I think that the current <coughs> bylaw is like it is. And taking it out like that completely uh, may not be fair. Um, I have a few other questions too. If somebody wants to, um, um, should I just continue with a few other my, my, my questions? Do we want Larry's last name and address too, just for the record? Yeah. Larry, can we just, why don't we take them one at a time, okay? And you're from, okay. uh, you're from North Reading, right, Larry? That is correct. For, okay. for the minutes, you need, you need a last name and address. Do you mind giving us your name and address just for the record, for our record? Yeah, my name is Lawrence Tusi, 4 Alston Road. Thank you. Let's, let's take them one at a time. I, my, our town administrator had his hand up to answer at least that first question that you presented to maybe give you more clarification. Sure, Madam Mr. Chair. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, through you. Uh, you know, at the time that we sought the request for funding for this stage of planning and design work, um, I think we were you know, pretty upfront with folks that we did not know how this was all going to play out, and we're still working through that, and that was part of why we, we sought funding for the financial plan. And during the course of the very beginning of the work on the financial plan in the fall after the town meeting, it became clear that this restriction, this limitation of 50%, on which we were not relying for budgeting purposes at the time we brought forward the request in October of last year, but that, that it could limit the town, um, that it could really limit what the options are, and that it could potentially create an imbalance where you know, the town share being at 50% might not be possible financially for the taxpayer, or uh, might be um, unbalanced compared to the, the impact of the increase in value of property uh, for those better. So the, the DPW director identified pretty early on, and maybe late 2021 or early this calendar year, that this ought to be something that we should consider. Again, not making any determination about what that allocation could be. This bylaw change could happen. We could present the, finance, the financing plan in November or October of this year, and tell me you could say that 50% is the right balance. That's entirely possible. 
But right now, under the bylaw, we would be limited to that. And we're trying to provide the board, the finance committee, and the town through its town meeting maximum flexibility as to what that scenario might be. Um, so the short answer to the question is we identified it as we went through the initial work on the financial plan, and, and that's why we recommend it. And Madam Chair, just as an important point, just as a situation a, where the town meeting said, well, we're going to, um, let's just put 0%, so the town doesn't have to pay, pay a nickel for that, and that shifts um, a much bigger burden on, on the uh, on, on, on the areas being sued. Yeah. So it, it just seems like if you're putting it to the majority rule, Try to talk to that point too, Mr. O'Leary. Did you want to? Yes. Talk uh, to that so, point? Larry, well, one thing you have to understand is, you know, while it, it, it sounds like it's a majority rule, it's not. Uh, most sewer projects are going to uh, be not just raised and appropriate, but through borrowing. The borrowing requires a two-thirds vote of town meeting, so not just a simple majority. It's a two-thirds vote, and as far as the 50 percent share, it. it if it's cast in stone, it sometimes makes uh, potential projects not economically feasible. And what this does, uh, is proposing to do, is to allow the flexibility of the select board into a town meeting, uh, the opportunity to fairly assess the people who are truly being bettered and are going to gain the most majority of uh, benefits of this. And, and you're absolutely right. You know. Uh, the project that we're going to be proposing in the fall, and again, and I, I hope you can sort of separate this, and I know the timing of this is, is, is important, but, you know, this just highlights, because we're so close to uh, proposing a, a viable project here, we had to take a, a good hard look at to, as to what restrictions were on us and what the requirements, financial requirements would have been, and, you know, it doesn't make economic sense. It may very well end up being a 50-50 split, but as you pointed out, we already put 2.8 plus million dollars towards this of everybody's money. We didn't ask for the proposed project that's being designed right now that we're putting almost three million dollars into. We're not looking for anybody other than the town, which is the taxpayers with their, through their savings accounts here, to pay for this. We're not looking for anybody who's looking to be bettered at this point to kick in. Once we get all the information we have, we'll be able to properly assess financially how should it be split and how can we treat people fairly, you know, and make it, get it to a point where we can convince two-thirds of the people at town meeting to go along with it. So it's not a simple majority, it's not, you know, one, you know, 50% plus one that, that forces this on anybody. This is going to be a two-thirds vote uh, that, that's going to, going to handle it. it and, and what we're looking to do is we're also looking, we're also looking towards future, uh, if this gets approved, 
the specific project that we're talking about, you know, how can we handle those areas in the community that we're going to be able to expand into? How should those people and customers be treated? And again, we can't do it with the current bylaw. So we need the opportunity to have the flexibility to make it fair for those that are buying in right at the beginning and those that are going to be buying in over time. Uh, the ones who are buying in over time should not get off scot-free and they have an obligation to pay in for the payback portion of those people that have already made the initial investment. So just Greater Lawrence Sewer District, just get a little bit of side here. You know, when we buy into Greater Lawrence Sewer uh, District up, up there in Lawrence and North Andover, we have to pay for capital improvements that were already made 20 years ago. We have to buy in. Same is going to be the same deal with the MWRA. There was a buy-in cost, but we have to pay back the MWRA memberships, you know, membership for what investments they already made. This just allows us the same flexibility, and it, from a financial standpoint, it makes so much more sense to have a hard and fast rule, particularly with a sewage project. This is not just a, a private way where we're looking to lay some uh, new water lines or lay down some hot top, and it should be shared, you know, by. 15 people or 15 residences. We're talking about a benefit to the entire community, but that benefit is prorated, and it should be prorated appropriately. And the bylaw right now is too stringent and probably hamstring us in relation to our financial, the financial feasibility of moving forward. So that's why we're looking for it, and town meeting uh, will assist and will decide, along with the board, with the guidance of the select board, as to what the split should be. 50-50, 60-40, 70-30. And uh, there isn't going to be any freebie for anybody. I, I thank you for that, and I, and I agree that there's elements of the uh, bylaw that needs to be revised. However, I, I don't think you can, you know, like, when it just goes to town meeting like that, and it's majority rule, that the town meeting might say we're going to pay 0% of it, and then it shifts the entire burden on the, on the, uh, on the people being served. And, and, and that just doesn't seem fair and, and because you just you don't have a, a good plan in place, I don't think, on how that's going to be. You're, you're making it sound like like it might come up, you know, 60, 40 or 20, or it could be zero. And it, it, it's, just, it's a just majority rule and it, it, it's opened up. I, I can tell you, I can tell yeah, Larry, I can tell you from... Uh, the hundreds of hours that, that wait a minute. Well, I can't. We okay. can't hear both of you okay. talking at the same okay. time. And I, I also wanted, Larry. I just also want to give the town administrator an opportunity also to speak to that point. And I know you do also have other questions. So if we could just give the uh, actually is okay. our our director is here and to let him also give you some food for thought on that point that you're raising, and then we'll get to your next questions too. So, welcome, Ms. Percy. Thank you. Larry, this is uh, Joe Percy, uh, Director of Public Works. So I want to um, go back to the point you made where you said that the, uh, the project would be, you know, could be possibly 100% uh, paid for by the abutting of properties. And I just want to clarify that because, you know, you're going to look at all of the sections of the, of the bylaw changes. Uh, although the um, select board or the town meeting can choose to assess 100% of the project cost, it isn't to just the uh, abutters of the sewer. Uh, you know, these bylaws say that we are going to look at apportioning the cost uh, to you know, uh, build the, what, what I phrase as our sewer treatment plant, the pump stations, and force mains, everything we need to get to the uh, wastewater plant in North Andover. We, we separate out those costs. We know that not everybody that's connecting to you know the system now that are buying the system uh, is going to use up all that other all the capacity that 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 uh, construction has. So we're reserving in, in essence some of that cost and not putting that towards betterments. So that would you know reduce certainly reduce you know betterment assessments to less than 100 percent of the um, the total project cost. Um, you know what that actually amounts to be really depends on. In, in a lot of these uh, uniform methods, as you know, we reflect in these bylaws, how much flow is, is actually coming from those that are abutting the property to you know how much flow the system has or, or the capacity uh, that we're constructing? You know, so 
There's a percentage out there, and we're going to go through the uniform method to come up with some um, you know, appropriate way to apportion costs and, and determine what's to be paid for now by those that are butting the, the sewer and what will be reserved to charge as sewer privilege fees as people connect to those uh, to the line in the future and potentially increase the, the uh, property use if they see um, a, a means to do so through the sewer and, and the economic ability to do so as well. Um, they can pay uh, and purchase more capacity at a later time. So the general fund is paying or the town is paying a portion of reserving you know, that cost in this type of method. So I'll, I'll stop there and see if you have any additional questions. Well, I think, I think Larry's point is very similar to Don's, John Kelleher's point. So I, while your, your representation is understood and heard, the, our, from our review of it, the select board is recommending this modification. But under, we understand, I mean, it's certainly clear what your issue is. It's very similar to the issue that Don has raised as well in the letter that he provided to Abby to read to us. So the concern being, well, what's to, what's to prevent or stop the, the, a, a decision that, you know, okay, you're going to pay 100% of it. Is that's really what his issue is. There's nothing that, you know, m you know, fixes it like it was before at 50%. So... I think that what the, the select board's, um, I think Mr. Studo mentioned this, is the select board's purpose in trying to usher in this modification is just one step on the ladder to being, to having the leeway that the select board needs to be looking at all of these alternative methods that, that, um, that, that Mr. Parisi just mentioned, whereas before we'd, we didn't have this, we weren't able to do this. And there's somehow we need to work in this change to the bylaw to give us that broad ability to, to change it versus just a 50-50, the town pays 50, the, the abutter pays 50. So it's giving us the option to be able to look at it from a different perspective to be able to you know, have, a, have a more equi equitable way to pay for it. So, but I think the language is his, Larry's issue, the language is, is, is his issue in terms of their now not being that tied into 50% has to be, you know, up to 50%, so to speak. Larry, you had other questions you wanted to ask, right? Yes, I did. Um, so the, the current plan is, is to go down, for example, Main Street, uh, Route 28. Um, uh, what about the side street? Um, uh, so right now, like I live on Austin Road, about 200 feet uh, from Route 28. Um, would would you in the future decide? Oh, I'm gonna we can we can we can get more revenue by sending a a sewer line up up Austin Road, and now all of a sudden I have to pay a betterment on that. Uh, if you could change the rules in the middle of the game like this, would, would you do that? Like, just decide that we're going to now go up the side street and require those uh, houses on the side street to pay the betterment fee. So, why don't we let the director answer that? What is the current? All right, Mr. Gilberto's raising his hand. Go ahead, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I don't want to get too sidetracked on a specific project, but. To answer the question, this discussion began in 2014 with not only Main Street, Park Street West, and Concord Street, but also all of Martin's Pond and numerous side streets up and down Main Street. And it was a calculated decision to focus whatever project was first brought forward to be Main Street, Park Street West, and Concord Street connecting to the far south west end of town where there is industrial property in order to create a stable, financially stable sewer, uh, most likely enterprise, <clears throat> so that when it comes time for there to be expansion, the cost impact could be reduced, that the infrastructure would be in place already, and so that when we start talking about, at whatever point the community wants to pursue expanding, 
most likely in the residential neighborhoods. And again, that would be a decision for the town that it would, it would potentially be more affordable by us having set this infrastructure up in place in advance in an economically targeted area. So, but in other words, the same, the same, if this is a implemented for being able to expand, let's say down a side street that's adjacent to the main, the main line that we're talking about, it would fall under this very same, you know, bylaw in terms of how it's going to be, the cost factor is going to be. Is that right? Madam Chair, that is correct. Uh, although it would be a separate project, we're not expecting to bring that forward uh, in this first iteration. And it may have a, and it likely would have a separate financing model with separate expectations. Um, and Larry, I can't speak for my colleagues, but I was not looking at the, the sewer, let's say the sewer project as a revenue generating project, at least not, I, I mean, I can see it, the benefit of it, you know, in terms of economic development down the line, certainly that would be, uh, <coughs> you know, that's the major, um, I guess that's the major purpose in my, in my mind for moving forward with this. We need, we need to do this t to change, to change things, but I, I'm not looking at this bylaw for purposes of, of generating revenue for the town. It's really just to, to give, like Mr. Studo said, some flexibility to be able to, to fund this, you know, really what <coughs> we consider to be a necessary project. And I don't know if anybody else has it. Mr. Studo. And, and I'll add to um, Mr. Lawrence's point, Larry, I, just like uh, the town administrator said, the next project could be different. So, same logic, what if in that expansion, 50% is too much for the abutters, but now, hey, I'm sorry, bylaw says 50, too bad. So it works both ways. So let's just remember, when you don't have flexibility, it works both ways, meaning that, you know, for this one, I don't know where we're gonna go. We could end up, <laughs> we could end up at 50, 50. Those discussions are just, you know, it's premature discussion. But again, maximum flexibility, that what if we arrive at uh, this project or a future project where, you know, maybe it's the other way around where through the select board, whatever the select board is at that point, and, you know, with the finance committee and talking to experts, we determined that the town should pick up more of the cost. But you know what? I'd like, I'd like for the town to pick up most of the cost, but we can't because it says here 50%. Sorry. So, again, it's just to make the point that, it's about the maximum flexibility, and it's, it's, I'm happy that question came up because it shows why we need a custom approach. Because this project may go nowhere in October, but that doesn't necessarily mean that something that an alternative might not be proposed in the future. And again, we may run into the same thing that, well, we need the flexibility to even bring it up. So I, I just wanted to say that we're kind, of, we're kind of making a point as we talk through this. Okay. Mrs. Yeah, just, just regarding that, that, that point there, all I'm saying is I'd like to see a, a formal, uh, you know, standard procedure coming up with that percentage. Um, and I'm not sure if there's, if there's one that exists. Rather than just throw it up to majority rule, you know, that, that's my point on that first one. Uh, regarding the, um, I think the answer about whether or not this could extend up the side street, um, is, 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 I think the answer to that was uh, yes, it can. And if it, if it is extended up the side street, then whoever is affected by that uh, is it, it, going to be um, assessed the betterment. The betterment. So this, this, uh, this, before there was a little bit of a safeguard in there that you know that allowed people on that street to to veto it basically, and that's being removed. So now in the future, if, if, if this goes up, um, up, a, up a side street, then everybody has to have to cop up the money for this. Um, and and just, just so you know, I mean, I, I've been in the sewer business for over 30 years. Uh, you might say I'm an expert at this stuff. Um, sometimes when the, you, know, if you look at projects, 
they want to put they put sewers everywhere because it increases I don't, I don't want to say increases the revenue, but it, it makes it brings in they got the capacity and the more users they have, the lower the cost it is for everybody. So there's a huge incentive to, to spread the sewers out uh, and, 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 and put more sewers in. Um, you know, and that's that, that, that's just an incentive that's built into the uh, into the whole process. Um, and, the, and the last question that I that I have is, is more of an engineering. Again, I do I, I do uh, computer models and sewer systems all over the country. And, and one of the things that happens is, is uh, failure. So as I understand it, flow is going to basically go by gravity down to the town line, and there'll be a, a pump station that pumps it up. And, and so just you know, I always think worst case when we're, when we're designing these things, if, if what happens is the pump station fails, and they do fail, there's, there's all kinds of things that happen. And um, but what happens then? Um, you know, all the sewerage continues to flow down, and, and would there be an emergency bypass? Is, is that is those kinds of design questions have been have been asked yet? But what happens during the failure? Have you guys considered that? Like the sewage, what I see in a lot of places is you know, the failure, the sewage continues to come and it, and it flows into people's homes and they have um, basically sewage going out of the bathroom. And um, it's rather unpleasant. Well, let's see if we the can... The only way to stop it is to put it in an emergency bypass, but that's not, that's generally not allowed anymore. Let's see if we can uh, have that um, t town administrator speak to that. Mr. Gotcha. Gilbert. Thank you for you. And again, I don't want to focus too much on a specific project, particularly the design of a specific project, work for which is, is underway and, and for which will be presented to the community in the coming months, far in advance of the town meeting. But I will say that we were very clear in October that we had an idea of the route that we were going to take and the means and method in which we were going to get there. Uh, but there are ongoing conversations involving multiple departments of public works uh, and, and engineers about the best way to do that uh, and, and, the, and the best way to um, connect to the, ultimately the treatment plant. And those will be considerations that will be worked through uh, in that process. And to the extent that those protections can be put in place, they will be. Uh, you know, um, sir, uh, from your experience, that there is, a, you know, always, a, you know, a inherent uh, issue, and there's, a, a, I should say, inherent risk, and is inherent risk with water as well. Uh, it's something that goes along with the infrastructure in place. Um, same is true for stormwater as well, and we've seen that in the community. Um, but to the extent that those things can be designed into uh, 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 a strategy to get the flow to the plant, um, that we will do so. And I don't know if the public works director wants to add anything, but. Just, just, to, just to add that, you know, a lot of uh, pump station designs, and, you know, and that's what we have here, uh, <laughs> is built with redundancy, redundant pumps and uh, backup generators as well. So, you know, you you more than likely would have um, minimal total failure situations, but if it happened, you would probably have to do some sort of bypass pumping. You can't design that into a system, but ultimately, you know, that's something that you know, I've seen more so with other uh, sort of I and I issues, just heavy rain, flooding, pump stations. With a new system, we wouldn't have that problem. But that is all part of you know designing and operating a, a sewer uh, treatment system. Madam Chair, again, I, I don't want to take us too far off course, but I, I will just add to and Mr. O'Leary and Mrs. Stewart are familiar with this through their work in the water and wastewater planning. But we have invested in a, a substantial upgrade to our monitoring systems for water. And I expect that we'll have a similar monitoring system for wastewater as well, so that we're, we're, we're knowing what's happening with the system throughout the stretch, um, every minute of every hour of every day. Okay. Thank you. And what? We just one more, Mrs. Gonzalez. I just want to go back to Larry's original concern about amending the bylaw, which is a two-thirds vote. And Larry keeps saying majority, but it is two-thirds. But I have a concern now that you've brought that up, that, and I'm going to ask probably. Well, Mr. Gonzalez, just it's a two-thirds vote to amend the bylaw, right. but no. when that no. bylaw no, general bylaws to, to amend the bylaws, fifty percent. Okay, that's but to appropriate the money, 
Okay. To borrow money, it's two thirds vote. Okay. To amend the bylaws, so 50 50 percent okay. to amend the bylaws. Okay, okay. so amend the zoning bylaws. Zoning bylaws two thirds. I want to go back to that and his concern about can that actually happen? The scenario he is saying about zero. In other words, you're saying. That, so, that so we go to town zero, meeting. We don't want to yeah. pay anything. Everybody that's get, that adjacent to this, the town pays zero. Yeah. Everybody that's adjacent pays 100 percent of this project. Is this scenario? Can that happen? How, how is that going to be taken? So and and so that would only at a town meeting for that for us to effectuate. I misunderstood too. So for us to to implement this process, if this bylaw gets passed at a town meeting. That determination of percentage only requires a majority vote of that, those at the town meeting? Madam Chair, no. The, to modify this bylaw is a majority vote. In order to do the project, any project, would be a two-thirds vote. Because, because it's appropriation. Right, right, it's right. a funding. It's a funding or a financial warrant that requires two-thirds of the voting members present. To, right. to say yes to it, right? That's correct, okay. yes. So this is what happened with the turkey farm. Yeah. Yeah. Correct, correct. We had, yes. we had yeah, 60, we 62 to percent, it. we needed 66. Yes. Yeah, right. right. I remember that. That's why I'm always That's confused too, Mrs. Gonzalez. So, <laughs> yeah. so to effectuate any percentage, 0, 100, 50, 50, 70, 30, if that's going to be presented in a warrant article for any particular project, that requires two thirds of the voters at the town meeting to implement. For anything that requires borrowing. So keep in mind, yes. we, we do not we know, I don't, we don't want to focus too much on the project, but we know the magnitude of the project. And the funding is not laying around in accounts <laughs> to fund the project. It would need to be borrowed in order for it to happen, and that will require a two thirds vote. Yeah. And keep in mind too, and again, we, we always try and identify the sources of funding for specific projects. And so if they're going to have a, a if town meeting were to vote, and you know, is potentially is it, could it happen that a town meeting decides to assess 100% of the project onto uh, those that are going to be bettered? You know, sure, of course. Is that economically feasible? Probably not. You know, so renders it, you know, renders it kind of moot. However, if it's appropriated and the project is built, and the source of funding that is identified to pay for it can't fund it. When we vote a town meeting, we can identify it, but the town is still on the hook. The town meeting, the taxpayers are on the hook for the obligation. How we get there and pay for it is up to us. You know, and if we're going to try and get it through the betterments, through the, just the users, good luck. If the money and the resources aren't there, we still have a project that's been built. We still have a project that has debt that the town meeting voted to to pay for, and again, the initial vote at town meeting is we take on the obligation. It's a two-thirds vote, and then we're hoping to get the money over here. But if that fails, and just like the Hillview, when we took the Hillview, yeah. we said Hillview Enterprise was going to pay for the debt service on that. Hillview is going to continue to pay for the debt service on that and any other project they undertake. If Hillview fails, people stop golfing. The town of North Reading as a whole and the taxpayers and the general fund is still obligated to pay those those bills. So the likelihood of it being economically feasible is slim to none. So, uh, so, get it, so, so Larry, what, what we're looking for here is an opportunity to assess it appropriately and fairly. And again, what you're talking about is when we're going to town meeting with a project, you're looking for the select board to be presenting something, or the community planning commission, or the finance committee. All have recommendations and all have votes and raise our hands at town meeting and have a count. In order to get that money, you need two-thirds vote. You know, so, I mean, if there's a project, a smaller project, where it makes sense that those that are just along the roadway can, for a sewer project, you know, then sure, it can be done. It, unlikely. All right. um, I just want to make sure we got all of Mrs. Gonzalez's questions out of the way, too. Were you all set, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yeah, I want to make sure Larry understands. Yeah. You know, and Larry, you also asked, and this is specific to the project, and I, and I hate clouding the issue here. We are purchasing a certain amount of capacity with the Greater Lawrence Sewer District you know, to pump a certain amount of effluent up there. What we're proposing for a project in the fall is probably only going to be about 50% of that capacity, approximately less than 50% of the capacity. So yes, it, 
if and when this gets passed in the fall, more than 50% of the capacity that we're purchasing today, the rights to do it, we're paying for up front and over time, over 30, 25, 20, 30 years, we're going to be paying for that. But we're going to have the ability to expand down into the Martins Pond area, into you know, uh, Burdett and Eames Street, and you know, maybe down to Southwick Road, depending upon where. Keep in mind, though, that would be a separate project, separately funded, and the betterments could be different, only because the infrastructure will already be in place. So we're very cognizant of it uh, in relation to the future expansion, because we're buying that capacity. But we're also cognizant of trying to make it economically feasible for single-family residences, from both a public health and environmental standpoint, be able to do that. But, you know, we made a conscious decision to go with the project as we're going to be proposing this fall, which isn't the whole full-blown capacity-taking project. And each project is going to be standing on its own. How it's um, allocated, the cost, again, if you get more than 50% of the allocation right now, you know, the town is on the hook for all of that as a whole. And we're going to try and make it economically feasible so that the property owners along Route 28 Park Street and Conkin Street can afford it, as well as I live in an area of town that isn't going to get sewerage. But is there an economic benefit to me if this takes place? I believe so, and there's a number that should be attached to that, and I have an obligation to pay for it. So, you know, we have a lot of educating to do, and I, these are very good and valid questions. Um, I, I, I don't believe um, that your comment in relation to changing the rules midstream here, that's not the case, because all we got was the $2.8 million dollars to do the design, to find out what it's going to cost so that we can figure out how we can allocate it. The bylaw hinders our ability to do that. Okay. So, just, if you could, just, you know, during the, when you're making the presentation, just make sure that, that the town knows that the, the decision to go up these side streets will um, in, inflict uh, betterment on them that they will be basically assessed and have to pay. Um, and so, the, so the, it, 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 and, and it, it, it's not going to be paid for by 50 percent. Um, I haven't heard anything yet that says how you're going to assess how much it's going to be. It could very well be zero. Okay, I think I think before we get too far afield, because we that that is going to be the subject of an entirely separate yeah. town meeting too, Larry. So, as we, I, I don't want to get too far off of the topic <coughs> of what we're we are discussing here, which is the bylaw amendment. So, I know Mr. Studo has a, a something to say, but I also want to make sure we have anyone else that has any questions to have the opportunity. To be able to to, to ask too. Yeah, can I just ask a question to Larry? Just a quick question, Larry, in relation to it. You're looking for a, a, a floor of a minimum townwide contribution rather than a potential zero. Which is what it was before yeah. he said fifty percent. Well, it's fifty fifty, but you, you yeah, well, some standard procedure that's followed so that it's just simply not majority rule, like uh, zero percent at town meeting. Mm -hmm. It should be a fair formula that, that, that's used, and whether it comes up 50% or, or, or 30%, it just shouldn't be like uh, that, that people on the other side of town that don't have any you know, direct benefit to this, you know, it, shouldn't, it, shouldn't be that, it shouldn't be that put to them as a decision point, because everybody in town is going to benefit from this. Um, that's my main point. Yeah, I understand. It's a fair, fair point. Thank you. Or some formula that follows. It's just simply not, you know, zero to zero to a hundred. It seems to be it should be a little bit more more uh, more formal than that. Yeah, yeah, fair point. And that's my that's my concern. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, just, just Mr. Studo. And. And then again, yeah, it's probably the view. But the thing about the side streets or anything else future to any intended project, what I've learned in life, if we start attaching what ifs, nothing ever gets done. There is no progress. So if a presentation starts having every single what if, side street this, down to what if all of a sudden 
we get really creative and go shot all the way down 62 and buy my house to Middleton, which I'm not saying it would happen, but that's a what if. So I'm just saying, everyone can bring up a what if scenario, and I just feel like the best we can do as a board in this community is look at things at the merits of what's in front of us, like what we're talking about right now. And although I do understand, Larry, what you, what you said, by the way, I don't wanna make it seem like I don't. It just that I think we get to a point where if we start a, just attaching what ifs to everything we discuss, it's just gonna be a circle. That's it, I mean, you'll just go in a circle. And usually what if is a way to postpone things from getting done. So I'm just gonna be really honest about that. So that's all I have to say about it. And, and it's important to have the, just, we don't have this, we don't have very much of an opportunity like this presenting itself. It doesn't come along very often. And, it, and the opportunity to be able to expand it, I think, is, an, is a key component to me being brought on board with this idea in addition to the economic development. So, you know, that, that give that opportunity to residents along the side streets or, or other, you know, neighborhoods along the side streets. And it still is going to follow that, that, that process. So, um, but it would be, you wouldn't be able to define, I don't think, until you knew what the cost, cost was going to be. So I think we're, we're shifting off of really what we're trying to explain here with the bylaw, you know, in projecting, you know, what future, you know, future, where this is going to track in the future. But um, we're not even there yet, and we have to have the ability. I think that's the whole purpose of this amendment. We're not there, and we have to have the ability to be able to to modify it, though again, as Mr. O'Leary said, you know your point is, you know your point is, well, well taken and well explained, and I, I think it's, I'm, I, I think that's what Don is saying too, in the letter. He's trying to say yeah, something. Don, Don is saying that he thinks um, the bylaw uh, for sewing betterments makes a lot of sense. That's a direct quote. And he thinks that it ought to be uniformly applied to all governments. That's the gist of what he's saying. So we do have to, you know, we have other comment here, and we want to make sure that other people do have the opportunity to speak on this, but we appreciate your input and questions, Larry, as well. So let me see if I can, it's saying the focus, Bill is, saying the focus is on the 50% and its rigidity, proposing amending 25 to 4, the sewer portion, oh, section 25 yeah. 4, the sewer portion of the bylaws. Why not amend 25 3, the water supply portion of the bylaws, at the same time using <laughs> the same rationale? Dear Lord, Mr. Gilberto, answer that one. Madam We're Chair, trying to you. keep it simple, but. <laughs> Madam Chair, thank you. And, and I, I think that I think that does kind of go to the spirit of Mr. Kelleher's question from earlier as well. And, and, and the answer that I'll provide is that I, I know that you know when the bylaw was, we know that when the bylaw was created, the re really the only practical area where it could be applied would be for street repaving, sidewalk construction, and stormwater management. While sewer is identified in the bylaw as written, it was not a practical, feasible option because there's nowhere to which to pump or drain the sewer to. There was such a substantial investment that needed to be made in order to provide that as an option anywhere in town that, as I mentioned earlier, and Mr. Reese identified, we really need to give ourselves that flexibility, particularly on the front end of the project, but for any subsequent project that might come up as well. And so the short answer is, we felt that it was a very different scenario that was you know, far more challenging to implement than any of the other areas. We have a stormwater system that has outfalls. We have paved streets that connect to unpaved streets. And we have a water supply system that goes uh, virtually throughout town. It's much more feasible and possible for these, those projects to occur. When you talk about the sewer project, this is just a, a much different um, scenario uh, with many obstacles, uh, and for which we've been, we're investing a significant amount of time to identify the right funding model for it to proceed. But I think the, the, 
is it Bill? Yes. I yes. think he's saying we should use the same model for 25-3. That might be something we take up though mm -hmm. at a separate time. It, it not something that I think we said you're opposed to, candidly. Right. I, I think we more were focused on being respectful of the history behind the bylaw and why the sewer was different. But I think that that's certainly something we can look to for an upcoming town meeting. Right, we should do that. And I think you would address Mr. Keller's concern too. Okay. And again, excuse me, the, the, the current bylaw in relation, well, to everything at this, including sewerage, talks about private streets, not public ways. You know, it talks about private streets, you know, like in, in two, public hearing, abutters on private streets must vote on whether they want their street converted to a public street. So these are private ways that are looking to become public streets, or private ways that the town is looking to have accepted and put into the formula for, for, for money, uh, state funds to put it on the, on the road map so that we get the mileage and put it on there. So what's it going to cost to do that? So in the private streets under the current bylaw, that's where the majority of the people on the street that are going to be impacted and the abutters have their say. 50% of the majority of people on the street that are going to be impacted have to vote yes, we want to do it, and it'll be a 50-50 split. We're not talking about public ways. You know, so I, I think 25-3 is mentioning public ways, but it's mentioning it in the context of in improving the infrastructure that's there and assa assessing how the, how the formula is going to be assessed for improving the Right, but it doesn't it. necessarily allow for people on public ways where it's going to be impacted to take a vote. It doesn't, right? No, it's only the private ways, so let's not get right, confused with right. what the current bylaw allows for. You know, forget the 50-50 split. But as far as expanding into other neighborhoods, if they're a private street, private way, yeah, the, the bylaw still stands in relation to everything but sewerage. If this is what we're proposing. Forget sewerage, pull that out. Um, but in public ways, okay. different. Yes, you're, I see. You're right, Bill, one step at a time. That's what we're trying to do here. <laughs> All right. And you can see these aren't easy, easy discussions that we have because we already have it to a warrant article and we're still going back and forth on it. So we have, um, just, is there anyone else that has any question? We've really talked about this um, for quite a bit, but if there's anything else in terms of the purpose for this or anyone <coughs> else that's in attendance and has questions? Nobody. All right. Well, thank you for... Uh, Thank you for the uh, questions and the participation in that one. We'll look forward to seeing everyone at the meeting too to further the discussion on it. And we'll go to the next one, Mr. Gilberto. Thank which you, is Madam Chair. There's one more article. Article 27, appropriating funds for forestry consultant for the Swan Pond Forest area. <coughs> this was requested by the town's forestry committee and would authorize funding for a consultant under the direction of the forestry committee to provide conceptual plans for trail improvements on approximately 270 acres of town-owned land in the area of Swan Pond. The amount proposed is $65,000 proposed to be funded from free cash to be expended by the Forestry Committee. I will note, it is for funding a consultant to design, to, to identify conceptual plans. Uh, it does not involve construction. We're not constructing trails under here. Um, and there, may be, there may be access to the property that's required in order to evaluate it, but this is only for conceptual plans. <coughs> Both the Select Board and the Finance Committee have previously voted to recommend this office. And it, it only pertains to Swan Pond. That is correct. The Swan Pond Forest area. So when people see the word trail lately, they're getting nervous about that. But there are existing trails, and the premise behind this was, um, when it was presented to us, to make it more um, accessible to the public. It's a beautiful, um, it's beautiful land, and, and uh, it, it's not as accessible as it could be. So. Yep. That's the whole premise behind this. Does anybody have any questions or comment with regard to this? <coughs> Super quick question. Of course. Um, do we know? Noah. Noah Spicer. Yes, yeah, sorry. Noah Spicer, 13 Swan Pond Road. 
Um, do we know if the consultant in the area of trail improvements would be looking at improved parking for the so-called trailhead in that area uh, in addition to the trail improvements? I can answer. Yes, Mr. Yes, Walmart. Yes, that is the intention is to, to take control of the parking to make it more accessible, to make it also safe for ADA, um, you know, be ADA compliant as much as you can in that situation. Uh, and the goal is also to control access from uh, motor vehicles that are in there now that should not be in there. So, yeah, thank you. And it'll be giving us a plan that we'll be, then they'll present them to us and we can take a look at them here and see if they're feasible. So I'll, I'll have more questions as it goes along. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Harlan? Uh, I, I think that the last time the discussion concerned the uh, Article 27, um, it was suggested that this is not a preamble to an article going you know, in another year that would be for much larger quantities of money to establish trails and facilities or whatever at the town forest. That, if I understand it, Mr. Walner can correct me, the idea was that there might, be, that, that there would be um, various town volunteers that would help to um, uh, satisfy the designs that the uh, consultant had come up with to, to blaze the trail, as it were. Um, because I think there was a certain amount of apprehension that one thing leads to another, and next year you could see a request for, I don't know, $350,000 to establish trails, parking lots, this, that, and the other thing. I, I don't believe that's the intention of this committee. Um. Mr. Walner. Yeah, I mean, we uh, there, there's going to be no paving of the existing trails. Any new trails we we um, create would still be dirt, you know, uh, natural materials, other than probably around the parking areas. And if we did some parking areas, you know, we'd be coming back more to the town to help us, you know, do it'd be modest improvements, I would imagine. Uh, and as far as labor is concerned, we've already had. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts volunteer to help us do work. We have a connection with Essex Aggie who uh, would help us to do some of the construction of signs if we do some sort of signage. So I can imagine a modest budget for lumber of some sort of those kind of things, but I can't imagine 350000 I've looked at throughout the state what other people have done. I've never seen those kind of numbers. That was a mythical number that I pulled out. <laughs> I just wanted to put us in the zone that I haven't, I saw numbers of, you know, 60,000, 80,000 yeah, around there. My point is that this is not a feasibility study that is based on the assumption there's going to be a much bigger and more expanded request going further. Am I understanding? There, there is not our intention to ask for any big money coming up. Right. Um, but the, in, the intention is, and actually what normally happens is when you get the consultant involved, they reach out to the community and typically it turns into a Friends of the Swan Pond trails. And then you start to get more and more volunteers involved there. I'm not saying there's going to be some infrastructure need to just get us off the hump, but I, I think it's small dollars and you know, labor will be taken care of by volunteers. And, and but, my, but my understanding was there was, there was not going to be any alteration of this. We're not putting in a soccer field here no. or you yeah. know a boat ramp or anything. Parking would There's be no the most most aggressive thing we would do. Right. It's yeah. more to kind of promote the accessibility and and you know signs and yeah. more information of the I think it's a, it's a hidden gem and if you ask people where Swan Pond is I don't know how to get there. Swan <laughs> Pond not the issue it's the town forest. <laughs> Okay, so does that answer your question, Mrs. Herbert? It does indeed. All right. Does anybody else have any questions with regard to? All right. Seeing none, we'll close the uh, public informational hearing. Can I can just comment on that? Can, sure. Um, you, I of think course. you'll be introducing this. Can you uh, give Allie a um, chance to take the lead to show her slides? So that I guess understand. so. Okay. <laughs> so if you can introduce her, so that'd be great. Of course. Sure. As long as there's there, 
It takes 30 seconds or less. <laughs> You, you saw I'm the slides. Only we saw the slides. They're, she's just brief. She's quick. All just, right. It's so new for people that is, you know, just be good to introduce it. All right. So thank you. That's good. So that ends that um, informational hearing, and everybody has their assignments. Yep. So thank you, everybody, for who, uh, who was attending and, and joined us for that. Our, we'll move on to the next order of business, which is a vote to schedule a show cause hearing for the Thompson Club uh, uh, violation hearing. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. Do I, did I miss something? No, you did not. All right. But there is a motion without time written into it. Yeah, was Mr. Waller. Yeah. <coughs> so I expect that at the meeting of the 13th, we will have a few things going on. First would be the annual water rate and capital plan hearing which I don't anticipate will be a terribly long hearing. The second may be a uh, further presentation. Famous last words. <laughs> the second would be a presentation from uh, one of our consultants relative to the sewer project, which I expect will be uh, substantial in, in time uh, if we do put it on that agenda. So, and I know that you and I have not had a chance to discuss, but I, I wonder if it makes sense to plan to go into open session a bit earlier than we have at 7 o'clock p.m and start with this hearing and then move into those other, other matters. Uh, or we could alternatively, uh, I, I would suggest, we could make it very late in the evening as well, but we will have police department representatives that will be waiting to, to present. So I don't know what the board's pleasure is, but I'm kind of thinking maybe we put it for early and go through it with no facts at this point, and then we can move into the water rate hearing and then into the, by, by 8 o'clock, hopefully, the presentation from the consultants on the waste water. 13th. The 13th, yes. That's, that's a whole lot of uh, you know. hearings in one meeting, so. Another option is to defer action on this hearing. Um, we should do the water, water rate hearing on the 13th, but if we wanted to defer this, we could move it to, I think, the 11th of the next regular meeting. So we have the water rate hearing. Mm -hmm potential presentation from our sewer consultant. And then our next scheduled meeting is July 11th. That's correct, yes. Wow, that's a big gap. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you're asking to move it up because you have, we're going, can't, can't we have our law enforcement join us virtually? And then we just alert them when it's time for the disciplinary hearing? We can. We can, we can do that. Because I, I would but the party also would have counsel, I would imagine, and want to be, pre be present also. Of course. Yeah, of course. Right. I, I would expect them to be here. I would think so. Yes, yes. But Michael's, Mr. Gilberto's concern is making our law enforcement hang around so, until that time. So I think somebody waits, no matter what, most likely Mr. Parisi being <laughs> key among them. It's just well, I, I, I mean, and unfortunately, this, I think this should be, we handle our business and then this, and this could be scheduled after all of that. So let's be realistic about the time frame though. We can't put, our, put this on at 8.15 when we have two other pub, you know, public hearings ahead of it, or excuse me, water rate hearing and informational hearing. So let's What's be the realistic about it. The, it's a water rate hearing. So what the water rate hearing, yep. the presentation by the sewer consultant, and this hearing on the top of And I don't think we should be upending our business because we have to address a, a disciplinary hearing. That 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 should be. Quite frankly, they should wait to be, you know, heard until we get our business done with the other matters. There's, that's a disciplinary hearing. So. Well, uh, that would be my thought, but anybody have any issue with that? I just think we should really carefully plan it out so that we're not... I, I have no know. problem starting a half an hour earlier because, again, I don't anticipate the water rate hearing. I, I haven't heard anything as far as the water rate hearing saying we're looking for any huge increases in water rates. Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. So, so that should be pretty routine. Uh, the consultant coming in is going to be time consuming. Right. So I mean so if we start a half an hour earlier with this show cause hearing. 
then the only ones that can be get so rest, I guess. Right. The extra half an hour. We have to add this now into our docket. You know, so so that that to me should we should be. Do you want to start a half an hour earlier or add or, so or a half an hour later? In other words, right. 6.30. Or, or add a half an hour later. 6.30 versus half 7. Half an hour later doesn't cut into my paycheck. <laughs> no, no, no. Half an hour earlier yeah. does. No. I, I mean, I, I'm okay with 6.30. Yes. Yeah. I was suggesting 7 o'clock. Oh, 7 o'clock. Yeah, well, we, we're not doing it. So, so no, exa just start oh, right no in. executive? It, it would, my recommendation would be a half hour executive session, okay. 6.30 to 7. And then open session, rather than a full hour. Well, what is there? Well, well, what is there besides that? Those are the three items that are. Okay. Though, that but the I mean, there are other. Assignments are pretty routine. Um, there's not anything that I think is going to be a substance, you know, or, or overly time consuming beyond those three right now. I have my liaison assignments for this evening. Yeah. So that'll be real quick. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on. I do. So. Um, so it's if if the board wants to begin at seven, and we'll, we're we're going to tend to. You know, what do you factor in thirty minutes for a water rate? A, an hour for the sewer presentation. I think that'd be fair. Or more, or more. I, it could go more than an hour, and that's why yeah. I, I kind of hate to bookend it with anything on exactly, the side. Exactly. Exactly. As much as I don't. Yeah. Want to so. Adjust our schedule to a disciplinary issue. I just my worry is it, it could go on. So, um, well, what is bad about punting into July, or do we want to make like a decision on that earlier? Yeah, I think, I think you want to. I think we should just. I just think should take some timely it. action on the, yeah. on what's been presented right. to us. Right. But, I so, agree. So, yeah. so, if we have so executive eight, session eight. at six thirty and public session at seven. That's fine. I mean, six thirty is usually after seven ish. Seven, so seven, seven fifteen. Not, I thought you wanted to start at six. Seven fifteen to seven forty five is the rate water rate hearing. You're already baking in seven, fifteen minutes late. Seven forty five to eight seven forty five oh, to eight forty five is a sewer maybe nine nine fifteen is a sewer presentation. <laughs> and they'll be yeah. third on the docket after that. So nine fifteen minutes. Plus you or minus. You don't have 30. to. You don't need to Plus tie it in. You are, you, know, mind you, know, you cannot. Your notice can just advise them to appear because they'll be on the dock of our disciplinary hearing. So maybe we get done earlier and we can, you know, have it earlier. It's not as though you're publishing uh, in the paper a disciplinary matter. We can ask them. I mean, we normally give them a time for the hearing itself, but to your point, I think we could give them the time of the public session of the meeting and when we get to it. Okay. And, and that's primarily the business we're going to be addressing in the next meeting unless yeah, there there's other things that are coming there, there are there's other business but it's not oh, so okay I, well I'm, I'm not worried about <laughs> it. Not, not that it's not important but yes. it should not be timing so okay all right so we are scheduling that show cause hearing to be held um at our next meeting of the board yes all right we'll do we need a vote on that we do we let's have a vote, vote on, on that, that. <laughs> okay madam chair i move to schedule a show cause hearing for thompson club Incorporated doing business as pro shop for Monday, June 13th, 2022. Is the time or no time? Is it seven? No time, right? Seven. Oh, 7 15. I'm sorry, Miss. Seven o'clock. At 7 15 p.m. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. No, no. No, we're like Comcast we're between seven and we're eleven. Not, we're not scheduling them to appear at seven. I thought we, we just said the exact them. opposite of that. So we have to give them a date and time to attend. We have to give them a date that the hearing is going to be held. Right? Do you have to give them a time? No. We have to tell them what time to come to the town hall. They can come to the meeting because it's going to be on the docket to be addressed when we reach it on the docket. You do have to schedule a water rate hearing at a specific yes. time, which was 7.15. We just talked about this. 7.15, right? And then your presentation follows that, which we don't have to schedule at a set time. And then we can do the disciplinary hearing after that which doesn't need a scheduled time. It just needs a scheduled date. Okay, we'll, we'll address it in a lot of time, so I guess no time. That's why I left it off, so I had to, I never set the time. Right. Yeah, okay. You want me to say it again or are we good? Go ahead. 
Okay, well, Madam Chair, I move to schedule a show cause hearing for Thompson Club <laughs> Incorporated doing business as Pro Shop for Monday, June 13th, 2022. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Walmer, second, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. While this may be a disciplinary hearing, it's also a local business in the community who made a mistake, has a right to be heard, and I think we should be courteous. And I don't think it's a, it shouldn't be punitive. I believe they should have a specific time to come and be heard. And, and I don't think it's unreasonable to put them on at 7 o'clock and then we can handle the rest of the business. Again, based upon what we know is going to be on the agenda, I don't think they should be punished and forced to sit here until 9.15, 9.30, or 10 o'clock at night. No one's punishing. Them. Well, it appears. Uh, maybe. It, I don't know. No, Depends it appears. It appears that, that the public without cares, giving them a specific time, it appears as though, and it, it, it sounds as though, and you set the agenda, Madam Chair, it appears as though it's not your intention to put them first on the agenda. It's your intention to put them at the end, or towards the end. Because I don't want to punish our regular individuals that have to be here for our meeting after <laughs> working for the day. These are our employees, too, and our consultants. Those people are being punished by having to sit through uh, a people, disciplinary hearing. These people are local businesses, local taxpayers, and again, they made a mistake. We have an obligation to, to address it, and I, again, I, it appears punitive to me. And I, so it's up to the, so, uh, I'm just one. Kay. I don't think it's fair to have to put them okay. first in the queue when so we Madam have Chair, other business. Madam Chair, I move to amend to a time specific of 7 p.m. Motion to amend the motion. Do I have a second? Okay, hearing none. We re re revert that motion fails, so we do have a motion on the floor to schedule it for June 13th. Do we have a second? I already seconded. He seconded. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Yeah. Motion, second by Mr. O'Leary, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. All right, next order of business. KP Law consent regarding regional housing <laughs> services office vote to approve and sign. Mr. G Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you have before you a uh, recommendation and request from KP Law, who is town council, to uh, acknowledge and consent to their representing the town in the review of an intermunicipal agreement between North Reading and other communities for our Regional Housing Services Office. Uh, the uh, planning departments and the other departments involved in the administration of this intermunicipal agreement are recommending changes to it, um, one of which is to allow for the services to be administered by a contractor rather than an employer, than an employee of one of the member communities. KP is also town council for another community, the town of Wilmington, that is a party to this agreement, and so they are recommending that this vote be taken and that uh, uh, subsequent form of be signed, which if it's not in the design form, it will be printed at the end of the meeting uh, with regard to this. Um, I've reviewed this uh, with the town planner. I'm comfortable that, um, that the town's interests, interests will continue to be uh, protected in this review. Um, I know we've all talked about this agreement during the annual budget. We know what it does. It, it's for monitoring of our compliance uh, with subsidized housing inventory in particular, so it's an important function. Um, and I'm recommending that the board vote to uh, approve and assign the, uh, the disclosure. Okay, any questions? Do we have a vote? Okay. Do we have a motion, I mean, not a vote. We do. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to determine pursuant to Rule 1.7, is that what you're saying? <laughs> 1.7 of the Massachusetts Rule of Professional Conduct that the North Reading Select Board consents to KP Law PC representing the town of North Reading the town with regards to the intermunicipal agreement for a common regional housing services office with the towns of Reading, Saugus, and Wilmington, and the city of Woburn, as discussed as disclosed in a letter to the town dated May 2nd, 2022. Notwithstanding that KP Law PC also serves as town council for the town of Wilmington and to sign the determination dated June 1st, 2022. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Next order of business is public comment. Do 
Do we have any public comment? None. Next order of business, town administrators, but Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize, but I have to read my report from my phone this evening. Uh, I just will note that the police department will be hosting a free rape aggression defense course this summer. There will be two four-day sessions, one in June and one in August, and I attach the flyer, which is also available to the police department's uh, social media platforms. Um, secondly, as the board knows, the fire department is anticipating a handful of vacancies to occur over the course of the next fiscal year, including one vacancy that was created by a transfer earlier this fiscal year. We've had difficulty identifying suitable candidates from the so-called paramedic civil service lists. While we expect to be able to fill the existing vacancy with a paramedic, we will need to consider alternative strategies in order to maintain proper staffing levels in the department moving forward. That's something that the fire chief, myself, the finance director, the public safety director have been discussing and we'll bring back to the select board for further discussion over the course of the summer. But I just want to make the board aware uh, that it's something that we are looking at based on those vacancies that we've talked openly about in, um, in the budgeting process. Um, and Madam Chair, I believe that concludes my comments. Thank you. Can I just read that the, for the course yeah. that you mentioned, the, the, the contact info on the flyer says to contact Detective Mike Mara, 978-357-5057 or email mmarra at nrpd.org and there's also some contact information to look. It's, a, it's called RAD, R-A-D, the Rape Aggression Defense Course for Women. All right, the classes are from 6 to 9 p.m. for those that want to join after work or after school. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Gilberto? <coughs> any? All right, we're going to go to old and new business. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, let's see. And board member uh, board reports. Board member reports. I mean, so again, uh, next meeting, uh, wastewater, uh, Mr. Scudo and I, along with the administration, meeting rather regularly uh, these days. And uh, again, we're uh, hoping to have our consultant um, talk about the betterment proposals and how it's going to be assessed and all the rest uh, will be giving us uh, an update as to where they are in their phase of the, um, the contract. So that's going to be important and informative for everybody. Uh, the, uh, the only other thing I want to, a couple things I want to comment on was, uh, one, I thought the parade was nice to be back on, on the parade route, uh, first time in three years, and uh, it was nice to see Mount Vernon Street was relatively smooth with no potholes. And uh, town administrator got a good workout pulling the wagon with a couple of boys in it. And uh, in on top of it, out of it. <laughs> in of it, out of it, because we, we got run over by the Little League a few times, and, you know, over, overtaken by the Little League. But it was great to be back out there. Nice to see everybody uh, involved and, uh, you know, good turnout on the, on the roadside, too. And uh, Ms. Gonzalez was a terrific address that you made and very appropriate, and uh, your comments were well received. So thank you for that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, just want to urge people to come to town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday night, we have some business to tend to, as you saw this evening. And uh, we want your participation, we want your input, and we want to hear from you. So uh, come down and have your voice heard and your vote counted. And then on a more sad note, uh, we had a passing of a former uh, employee, uh, James or Jimmy Lobster or Burke, who was a longtime employee of the Department of Public Works, retired. Uh, member of Public Works, but uh, wonderful fellow, uh, well loved and beloved by everybody as uh, his fellow workers and, and the community as a whole. Again, he was born and raised in North Reading, and uh, you know, an untimely uh, passing. Uh, so to his family, you know, our condolences. And uh, but what a wonderful fellow! Uh, everybody loved him. Everybody knew him. So it was great. Uh, so to uh, Jimmy's brother Hank and. Uh, rest of his family, uh, our condolences. And that, Madam Chair, all set. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner? <coughs> okay, so um, I, uh, with um, Allison Polito from the Forest Committee, we went to the CPC meeting during the last meeting, and uh, we presented there, and they were all in favor of it and everything else like that. So I stayed during the meeting, and um, what has continued to be on my mind is the accessory dwelling units 
that that's kind of sitting in their basket right now. They're supposed to be working on a policy for that. So at the end of the meeting, I asked if they could kind of revive that because that hasn't come up to the surface in a long time. And ended up in a long discussion. Um, basically, they wanted to know, are we as a board still in support of pursuing an accessory dwelling unit policy? Um, because they felt a little bit um, from the affordable housing overlay that they felt we were on board and then when we get to town meeting we weren't on board. And so they're a little bit nervous about, you know, if they hear from us that we still support going after that policy, then they're more willing to step up and revive it. But at this point they're feeling not supported by the board based on their experience from the previous meeting, which is another discussion. So as a reminder, assessor dwelling units is putting in laws uh, allowing our specifically our older overhoused seniors to have family and or aides live in the house with them so they can stay in town and not have to move out. That's the primary purpose of the accessory dwelling unit and to also build in some safety that there's permits being done that people are already doing it now <coughs> unofficially, you know, under the radar. This would be a way to make it more official and make it more, um, you know, a, a upfront um, opportunity for people as opposed to we're not doing anything about it. So I just wanted to get a read from the select board about that. I don't want, I know you're not finished with your presentation, but we'll I've, ask the membership, but I think Mr. Sudo has a I have question a too. I, I couldn't make the last one, but uh, Rich, was there any movement on the actual CP? The last consensus I saw, it seemed like that depending on the day, they didn't have even three votes for it. There, there's one or two items that are still mm -hmm. they're a little headlocked on. But, I think but when I brought it to their tent, again, I was just asking, would you look at it again? And then it turned into a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's whole, it went a whole other way. But they, at the end, they said, thanks for bringing it up. We really should get this one resolved. We just want to know that the, the select board, and I, suggest, I suggested if you're getting stuck in a few points, why don't you come and meet with us to discuss it with them and be happy to give you some input. So that was my offering to that. But um, yeah, is there still a log jam? Yeah. I, no, I, thank you, that was my only question. I believe there is. I believe there still is a log jam <coughs> that I think they should be able to get resolved. I don't think we're not the first community to come up with assessor dwelling unit mm -hmm. policy. I think uh, there's communities that do it routinely and it's been successful. So um, there was a, did we actually, I, you're going to have to refresh my memory, did we actually read through a proposed bylaw or no, change? No, there, there, was, there was some. Because I think they, the last time it was formally discussed was a couple months ago now, yep, yep, right? Yep. I think that it was a discussion that um, really it started as a safety issue, right? With, with Jerry finding that in a lot of inspections you could tell that these things were already there. And he, I think it was something where, you know, does it make sense to look at something where we standardize it so you... That becomes a moot point, and then I think it became a bigger thing, and that's where, you know, then there was um, some drafts by Danielle McKnight. Mm -hmm. Yep. But what happened is then that one of the drafts went much further than, um, and you know that again, depending on the day and the conversation, there was either two against or three against, depending on what it was, and then it was like non-committal. So, I think the last formal discussion they had is that it just. It had grown into something that the majority of the members did not foresee, so they just couldn't really move it forward in that, and then that was the last I've heard of it formally. Yeah. So they're still in the drafting phase, in other words? Well, they're more than draft, but they're stuck in a few points. But then what they were saying to me is that we're not only stuck in a few points, we just don't even want to come forward with this if the select board doesn't want it. Does the select board want an ADU policy? That's basically what See, they were asking. And in that, I'll just add, and then maybe, um, you know, I, I think I had mentioned to them as well, though, that the, the issue becomes that I feel with, like, planning things like that, we take a lot of weight of the CPC, right? So if you come in here and you start asking us to help you do your job and, like, this, this is more than just help us do our job. This is, like, can you write it? Not write it for us. I don't want to put words in their mouth. So I think that that's why a couple of them were hesitant, right? So I'm surprised they actually wanted to come here because then it becomes well 
is it the CPC's policy or has it become select board's I policy? You know? I think it's yeah. meaning and intending to go back to the to the the lots that were proposed for sale. And that came to our attention during the warrant article because it was a, we, we wanted to we were divided in terms of support and non support for mm -hmm. that. So we just agreed to pass it pass it over, I think, for another meeting. We really haven't taken it up as a an article now for that afford those affordable parcels. Yeah. So the that's probably what they mean is that they put something forward that went to uh, warrant for town meeting them. They yeah. didn't get our full support on that, so they're probably that, maybe a little that is bit a sort of reticent yeah. to okay. reticent to put this. I didn't know where you were going. My, my, my well, last that's, I'm assuming that's what you're. I, I, uh, well, so if you want to shed light on that, they were they immediately pointed back to that. Yeah, that's as what being I'm like you, you, yes, basically. Yeah. What they said was the select board reviewed this policy years ago. You created the policy. We bring forward an opportunity, and then we shut it down. And they felt like it was. Yeah, know. I don't remember looking at a, a, an accessory unit. No, 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 no. no, no two, separate, one. two separate. Yeah. Two separate. Yeah. Yeah. Two separate yeah. Yeah. So the You're affordable the housing was those four lots that they were going to build on, that they wanted to build for Habitat for Humanity. Yeah. That was at town meeting, and when it came up for town meeting, we we rejected it. Yeah. Right, I do recall that because it it was the first time we were looking at so it. So I was asking about one of them the was Chestnut Street too, which had quite a few residents opposed to it. But yeah, it bust, uh, well, it's a Havel. There was a water. Yeah. 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 Havel yeah. Street that abuts and Chestnut Village. Chestnut. And I think yeah. from that Chestnut. sore point that was they're scared to come on. Yeah, I to me, I explained to them that if you come in front of the CPC with the ADU and you're this divided, if you come in front of us, right? If two or three of your members, and let's say one is kind of neutral, but then two make a point of why maybe the select board should get behind this, but the other two undercut them, then it becomes, it's almost like, I don't want to say it like this, but like almost like get your own house in order and then yeah. come here, because then it puts us in a spot where we're not, you, you know what I mean? I, I never wanted, as li like as liaison, I told them, like, the select, the select board can't play tiebreaker here. You guys have five members, right? Like. Did you get that sense too that sometimes it was like, I just feel like if they don't come here with kind of a united front, it, it just makes it difficult for us to support. Okay, well, can for I, me can to I support. just, can but I just ask a question? Yeah. I haven't been attending it all, but uh, does there appear to be a majority support for some sort of accessory unit, dwelling unit, but you know, policy? Th th I, there would was, I would think that there would be a yes. That, that was a complete yes. So that's they, a complete they, yes. They, they now really it's a question of how important. far does it go. Right, exactly. Right. So so they're they're, they're like, Steve, I'm talking like, it's like red and, red and green apart. No, okay, so, 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 so at least they're, they're on board that there needs to be an accessory dwelling, apartment dwelling policy or bylaw. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we're on board with that. It meets our strategic planning. Yeah. So, so that's, that's okay. Now, so the thing is, so there's common ground there, and it's just a question of how far does it go. So they should just fi figure out how far they're with it and propose that. Then it's going to be amended later on. Get it on the books. Get it going. Get something going. And remind and, me. And again, and even when they come before us, I don't know what the proposals are. And I think I may want may not want to go as far. I may want to go further than they're proposing. You know, which again creates some friction and differences yeah. of opinion. And Rich, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the biggest sticking point whether it was detached versus attached? I, I can't even remember. I think that was one of the bigger it, one, right? Because that, that's it's a whole. It's in here, but it doesn't matter. But yeah, and, and again, so. It but converts yeah. some sheds into No, but thank you for updating that. Yeah, but, I couldn't make the last one. But let me yes. just add, I, I don't have any problem with them coming in and conferring with us where they're stuck because, like, we're pretty good at deliberating. <laughs> that's what we do. And there's a lot of projects that right. come through. There's a lot of projects that come through here. Forget policy. There's a lot of projects that come through here where we're deliberating and we're going back and forth and people you know, things get better through deliberation, right? So if, I, I don't care if they're stuck, if they come in and they want to discuss where they're at with it, I, I'm sure we could be giving them some good feedback. the last time. So I don't need them to come in with the United Front. I don't even care that, for personally, I, I just, let's get it going. Let's, right. let's get it, right. let's get it happening. Yeah. And if we're stuck, we, I'd be happy to deliberate, you right. know, as opposed to right. voting yes or no. Right, like know? Mr. O'Leary said to the, on the, Real, well, I don't even want to mention the words. But, oh, don't you know, we don't say no. That. We're talking about Bruno. 
it, we don't really say no if something comes to, you know, completion and it goes on the warrant article. Yeah. You know, we don't say so no. Get, I, want to be, I want to be supportive or I want to have, you know, clarity as to what my position is going sure. to be. So yeah. I'd be happy to deliberate with them. Yeah. You know, right. okay, where are you at? Are we all in agreement we want to see something. Okay. Right. Now, where are we at? We and can't do it next meeting. No, 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 no. Be at nine forty-five. No, no. I mean, well, be at 10 but, but again, even if they're at a log jam, you know, bring the log jam to us sure, and let's let's sure. let's air it out. Let's talk let's about work it. it. Let's talk about it because let's again, we want to be united it's with the select board and the time, planning commission, and finance committee going to town meeting. If we can't be no, no, no. I, I listen. You, Seven p.m. Leanne's now the liaison for that. At the next meeting, you can go and say. ADUs is on our strategic goals. I'll be happy to go as well because oh, I think they want to hear from me just because they, they talked to me for half an hour about it, but I'm happy to go in and support. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, we we'll, we'll invite them in to come and, you know, yeah. show us what they got. Um, you know, the, let's um, work it through. This is not, the, we're sort of behind in terms of putting that forward because there's many communities that have those. Yeah. So it's not like they're inventing something new however they're certainly planning just for what our community oh, but there's is also like. a tolerance level as to yes. what people want in their yeah, neighborhoods yeah. Sure, right. sure. yeah i would do as opposed to what's already in the neighborhoods well, yeah so as opposed to what's right. already there that's right yeah so so i think we need to kind of build bridges sure. um, yeah. inviting them i think inviting them in for this one and then i'm sure the affordable housing one's going to come up that we should uh, it, i always expected from that that different topic on mm -hmm. the, the affordable housing that I always expected they were going to come back to talk to us more about that. Right. And, come back, and they, they never came. And that basically is, in their <laughs> mind, that's came. a timeout. They're not doing no, anything then, on that. No, well, I think we have to make a decision as, in relation to those parcels. Again, I'm, I'm in support of doing those sorts of things that they were proposing, but I think we should be delineating the wetlands, know what we have, and yeah. decide what's going to, how, what's, how it's going to yes. be developed. Right. Again, you know, so that means there's an appropriation of money and uh, spending the money to have it delineated and say, oh, now we know what we can do with these parcels instead of having someone else can yeah. right and do it right. so uh, and if that's what our policy is going to be you know to them you know say listen we're, we're in favor of this stuff you identify the parcels we'll get the resources for you to we'll give you money to get a consultant to get the get the work done and then present it to us okay this is what's going to be proposed here you know five units two units one unit whatever it's going to be yeah. based upon what can be done and we'll know it's our land we should know what can be done with it right so it's, and we're partnering with somebody. Okay. A nonprofit. So we'll deliver the message. ADUs is the strategic goal for us, and you're welcome to come and deliberate right. so we can move us ahead. Come on and bring us what your draft is yeah. so we Perfect. can maybe bring us give your you ideas. some input. We'll do that next meeting. Do Not the next meeting, no. Yeah, so you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not we'll next soon. meeting. The meeting Not after next meeting. that. No, it's, it's no. I don't know when they're meeting again next. So All don't right. No. Anything after. else, Mr. Walner? Uh, it, just weird. We got this, Michael. We got this thing from MVRTA. They were asking if we want a van or not. So Dan Greenberg requested a van, van, and it looks like we're going to get a van. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> so I don't know how that happened. I don't know. I don't know, know, either. I don't know either. So we well, let's, we made the deadline. We made it by May 31st. We signed up for a van. MVRT wants to give us a mobility van for our senior oh, citizens. Oh, van. I thought a you van. said van. Uh, no, a van. Like a van. A van. Like a a band? mobility, a like mobility a band. van. I could have a van here if you want. And so we did everything. We, we hit the deadline, and it sounds like all we had to do was sign That's up. And this great. is what happens when I finally go to a board meeting a month before. <laughs> it gets a free van. That's great. Suddenly we're on the list. Will you get a van? Will you open it? I guess Good. sometimes showing up makes a difference. <laughs> Does that require a vote, or do you need to look at that, right? To Is it brand new? There's probably some sort of agreement. Yeah, I would yes. yeah. Okay. All right, Great. anyways, that's so fun stuff. Maybe that'll be on the 13th. That should be quick. <laughs> probably $100,000, who knows, maybe more. That's it, thank you. All right, Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, oh, first of all, I would like to concur with Mr. O'Leary. It was so good to be back out on the parade route and with everybody and celebrating, not celebrating, but um, commemorating. commemorating together. Thank you. Um, and I was very honored to be able to give the remarks on behalf of the board. Um, also, I want to talk about community impact team is 
um, still having the hidden in plain sight at the police department. Um, so it was tonight, I believe, right? The first, second, and third. Um, so that's going on right now. And you can register online on go onto the community impact um, website or Facebook page, and you can register. Uh, very informative. It's a great, great thing they do. It gives signs of whether um, someone could be using drugs, or you can spot, you know, if there's any issues. And it's things that you wouldn't even imagine, that you wouldn't even think of. So. It's, it's well worth going to. Um, and also, great news, the North Reading Community Impact Team will be sponsoring its seventh annual National Night Out <coughs> on Tuesday, August 2nd at the Ipswich River Park. National Night Out is an event focused on strengthening North Reading by encouraging neighborhoods to engage in stronger relationships with each other and with their local law enforcement partners. The goal is to heighten crime and dash prevention awareness, build support and participation in local anti-crime programs and promote safety issues. It's really a great time if you have never done it. Um, the police department usually is grilling and doing all the cooking and there's usually bouncies and all, all kinds of things for the kids to do. It's um, just really a great community thing to do. So. I'm sorry, that's August when? August Tuesday, August second. Yeah. What time? Okay. What time? Yeah. I think it's it around five ish. It's like five o'clock. Five thirty. Because they have barbecue. Yeah, yeah I know. It's like five o'clock. Yeah. yeah. So great to see that coming back again. Um, and I would also like to mention Anthony Mafio. Um, what is his actual title? Oh, our consultants? Yeah. Health insurance consultant. Health insurance consultant. Yes. Yeah. Um, his father passed away, um, so I just wanted to make hmm. mention of that. Um, they live in town. <coughs> okay. Um, okay. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Studo. So um, we had a the second annual EDC Business Summit. Uh, it went well. Great participation, great questions. Um, we had a good amount of business owners and interested parties who asked some really good questions. Um, it was good to have Mr. O'Leary there. It was like, you know, walking uh, history book of North Reading. So that's good. You know, we don't have to reference Google. We just had him. Um, and, um, but we got a lot out of it. And again, the next one, that we're going to have, we haven't scheduled it yet, will probably be once we have a lot of these numbers for SOAR, so it's something to, to keep an eye out and we'll definitely advertise it heavy, but you know, it definitely, um, it's nice to hear from, we don't get as many business community participants here because a lot of them are home by the time we start our meetings or about to go home, so it's nice to get that, that view. Uh, and then also, not that I wanna end my, Thing on a like a, a bad note, but it is swimming pool season again. Please be cognizant of kids in the pool. A four-year-old died in Brookline. Yeah. Near, around, close. Again, everyone's going to use their own discretion. I'm not in a position to tell anybody what to do. I can tell you that in my pool, if you're in it and you're not an adult, there's gonna be an adult in there or literally with his feet in the water. That just it is. If every adult goes to get a hamburger, everybody out of the pool. It just, there's no exceptions. And again, because with water, I've noticed that it's all fun and games until it's not, and it takes a second. And again, when you read those like that, I mean. I mean, like it, it affected my day. You know, but again, I, and I know that I have a lot of friends in town. We know probably a lot of friends that have swimming pools in town. And again, just understand that even that quick, I just went in to get a bottle of water. And also then, even if you have, again, I have an eight-year-old. 
and we don't leave him alone, but you know, you would think by 9, 10, but I also know that you throw a bunch of 9, 10 year olds in any situation unsupervised, and again, so I don't want to end on a like a, a dire note, but it, it's just important that if, if two people hear what I'm saying, and you never know if that can be avoided, but it's just something that I feel like it's just really easy when you got 20 people at the house to lose focus. Really easy. And I just think that, you know, it, it's definitely on the adults, right? I mean, this one's not on the kids. So, um, sorry, but it's something that's been eating at me since I read it, and I just wanted to mention it. When my first was fi uh, let finished kindergarten, they had a big <laughs> pool party at um, uh, Redmond Ave, one of the houses on Redmond Ave. Jennifer uh, Clark, she was my neighbor in Malden. So we had all the families there. She threw this big, big, wonderful party for all the kids, all the <coughs> students, the parents, everybody was there. And I happened to get to talking. I was almost ready to deliver one of my babies. And I, my son was in the pool. And uh, when your kid is drowning, you don't hear screams, you don't hear splashes, you don't hear anything. You hear nothing. And uh, I was talking with another parent. All the parents were around the pool. And all of a sudden, Helen Bullis, fully clothed from head to toe, shoes on and everything, jumped in the pool and brings my son up to, and saved him from drowning. And we were all there. I will never forget yeah. it. We were all there, all eyes on all these kids playing in the pool. And she thought when she first saw him, he was playing. And then, thank God, she had her eyes on him because then she realized, oh, he's not playing; he's struggling. And the pool had a slant to it. My son wasn't; he was, he knew how to swim, and he wasn't familiar that as it went down, it slanted deep. I'll never forget it, hmm. and I'll never forget her for saving; she saved his life, and I will never forget that. So. You're so right to say that because you, they're not splashing and reaching up here. They're going down quietly and calmly going down because they don't realize they can tap the bottom and come up. So it's really something that you're right. Even if they're an experienced swimmer, and they have, you have to have your eyes on them. So that's a great message. It's horrible when you read those stories. Anyway, I will never forget that. So. The, um, and I appreciate Helen Bullis to this day. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Um, I'm sure your son does too. <laughs> oh my God, yes, sure. yes. All right, thank you very much for um, t letting us, de again, declare this as Pride Month, Pride Ride again, June 12th, Ipswich River Park. Line up at the park if you're in the parade, 11:15. Ride starts at 12. There's a, an email on the flyer to F. D I C H I A R A at M A C dot com. Like Mr. Wallace said, send your uh, you know reservation in, I guess. Even though I'm sure they're gonna let every <laughs> if you want to join, yeah, just sure. decorate up your car and go have a good time and if you just show up, show up in support. Yeah. Um, and the parade ride starts at twelve. I had the um, yeah, so a, don't, I'm sorry, but just so people know that they can line up oh, yeah, to watch. Yeah, you don't have to yeah, just you can wait, you know, account. whatever you want to. Um, the, um, I thank you very much for giving the remarks at the Memorial Day, and I also wanted to thank, there was a full, full compliment of all the people that we so depend on to make this happen, the, the um, North Reading Militia Captain Stratton, Yes, thank you. Ran it, and Sue Magna for, for sure. Our, um, all our scouts were there in full force, and they actually get up at the crack of dawn to be with the militia to do the ceremonies at each of our, um, our, uh, our uh, cemeteries, yes. So thank you to everybody that participated. It was fun. We should put the baseball players at the end because they were throwing everybody candy <laughs> and so they were sort of infiltrating every every segment along the parade we were in a rough spot all the candy it was it was really but everybody was so excited to be in a parade and see a parade and have a parade yeah. so that was a great
day it was a nice way to commemorate the day and uh, nice nice uh, work by the band to added so much to it the um, I also had the pleasure of joining in a social stu senior social studies class mr. Austin's uh, social studies class in they spe had a specific question about what the process was to getting electronic signs because they wanted to to they were they were brainstorming about how we could encourage voters and they thought that electronic signs in the community, letting the commu alerting the community of the election and where to vote, go to vote, the time would be a great idea. So I had completely forgot that we had this fire department, the emergency signs, which uh, when I called Chief Murphy, he said, well, you know, we, are, we already approved that in the capital, the capital plan and that's going to town meeting. I said, oh, thank goodness I have a direct answer to the question <laughs> because he said that for public, um, for public uh, signs that, you know, for public, um, I guess, public service announcements that, that, the, that in the proposal that was another use of that. So, so I'm happy to tell, not that they're listening, but that's one of our warrant articles, uh, Article 17. So I did tell them that, at the, at the, but it was fun. It was fun to address them and they want to try to do this kind of, um, he wants to try to work it in annually where, you know, one of the members goes and just kind of does, you know, process procedures, you know, type of things like that, which I think is great because we, we talk about this voter engagement and voter involvement all the time and our, not just at our meetings, but at strategic planning. So that said, town meeting, again, this year it's going to be at the, um, it's going to be indoors right mm -hmm. it's going to be, it's gonna yeah. be indoors at the gym at the North Reading High School the gymnasium it yeah. happens to be the same night the seniors are exchanged are getting their yearbook so I told them to take a peek in so you want to see what the process is come and join us and just, you know you need your tag but so we're not doing it in the auditorium thing no okay. we're, not, we're not doing it on the football field no, right. no, but the other, remember the first ones I came to before COVID were in the... Yeah, performing, yeah, yeah. Performing yeah, because the gym's acoustics are... Mm -hmm. But anyways. Well, they'll, pro they'll probably um, have us set up though way ahead of time. So, because that's what Mrs. Kane did before she set oh, us like all up. Yeah. yeah oh, um, but it's probably due to other events that are going on, right? It's more for the access. The, the, the access for, the, we received a lot of feedback from the elderly getting in the auditorium and managing the auditorium is a struggle. And so, okay. um, yeah, this is kind of a let's try to do the, the town council thing. Go over first to sign. Let's go ahead to the town council. Um, yeah. It's available. Um, and I found that, that the check. access is a little bit cleaner uh, and more reliable. Um, the acoustics are not as great, but we do have Okay. <coughs> That's seven o'clock. So come and join us and vote. And then the last thing I had, I think um, Mrs. McNeil passed out the, the liaison assignments. There's just a couple I <laughs> have to make two two corrections to it. I meant to shift everything is as it is correct, but I meant to shift Mrs. Gonzalez to take over the Energy Conservation Committee and Mr. Studo for the Zoning Board of Appeal at the bottom. And the numbers are, uh, at, the, at the bottom should be that Mrs. Gonzalez has 11 assignments, Mr. Walner has 11, um, Mr. Mrs. Manupelli, me, I have 14, Mr. O'Leary has 11, and Mr. Studo has 14. I just kind of shifted around primarily Mrs. Gonzalez's and Mr. Studo's and then, you know, added some more of the human services groups to Mr. Walner because he's making some pretty significant inroads on a lot of those as well. So, I don't know if anyone had any questions. If we're no, all so, so Vin Vincenzo's going to retain CPC? Yeah. Um, no, no, no. no, 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 no. I'm going to retain no, no. ZBA. At the bottom. At the oh, bottom. ZBA. And then at the top, uh, energy conservation is for Mrs. Gonzalez. I, th I think I meant, I forgot to switch them over. What are the numbers again? Is that a new? 11, 11, 14, is 11, 14. Uh, I don't even remember that. 
Has there always right. been energy conservation? conservation? Is that new? I don't know anything about it. Just probably. Just popped up? No. No, the, some, of the, some of these seem new, but they're not new. So they just don't. I don't think I've ever seen Is there a committee that needs? That's for you to find out. You get a form one. I guess you're going to start <laughs> finding new people. Oh, here we go. And if there isn't? Find one. <laughs> All right. Together. Get it rolling, right? All right. So do we have a motion to? Yep. Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. Second by Mr. Leary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous.